beloved one, I hope you are doing well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed and stay blessed. The Bible says the B part of 2 Chronicles 2020. In fact, let's look at John chapter 11 first. John 11 verse 40. I just want to challenge us in the area of believing. God wants to do a quick walk tonight. But I don't want us to just come and waste our time. John 11 and verse 40. And waste our time tonight and then not receive something. You know, I made a vow before God. And every time I continue to vow it that... I, I keep saying, Lord, anoint me to a point that nobody needs to encounter me two times to be changed. Just once, it's okay. That once, once, that if you ever travel from anywhere and come here tonight, that even before the meeting, you just begin to rejoice because you know that if it is God that brought you here, except even if it's a Habali shrine, you won't come and go back the same. Are we together? I'm a student in the school of the anointing. I have been studying this all my life, but it's amazing, amazing, the dimensions and the possibilities that are surrounded in this mystery called the anointing. I repeat, you are not a blessing if you are not anointed. If you're a man of God here, please find a way of crying to God that he should put something definite upon your head. Otherwise, lock your church or lock any uh, out, outlet or what because you are totally wasting God's people's time if you are not anointed. It takes more than good intention to bless people. There is something from the realm of the spirit that must come upon people that you are in this meeting now and you know, not that after the grace you are just believing that, oh, let's see what happens. No, you can know that this one, I know that the anointing to solve my problem is this. You can know. You can know. It's true. A man doesn't have to tell you he's rich before you say he's rich. As he's talking, you look at him. That's how it is with the anointing. You can know you are in the place where the anointing to solve your problem is there. And Jesus said unto her, Say yet I not unto thee, listen, that if thou wouldest believe, it says thou shouldest see the glory of God. Have I not said to you that if you believe, you will see? That if you believe, you will see. There is a relationship between your faith and your experience. Listen very carefully. It's just an exhortation tonight. That if you believe, 
you will see that means whether you see the glory of god or not it is still there hmm. whether you receive the breakthrough or not the breakthrough is there whether it will be featured in your life is a different thing altogether are we together now whether you have a car or not there there are still cars in in a showroom now as we talk is that true whether you you have a house or not there are still houses empty and available so it's one thing for that reality to be available but it's another thing for that reality to become your experience are we together everything we so desire brothers and sisters is available in christ it's a reality in the realm of the spirit but there are systems in the kingdom that can capture that reality and make it your experience here and now that reality does not bless you for as long as it remains in the realm of the spirit your prayer and your desire is that the word becomes flesh so that it dwells among us then we can behold the glory for as long as it is still in the realm of the spirit it doesn't profit you what good is it if you keep having dreams and see yourself rising and then it never manifests open doors in the dreams close doors in your experience lifting in the spirit or whatever visions you're having but in the physical nothing seems to happen the bible says if thou wouldest believe you would think this is a very little expression if you will believe truly it says you will see my god that means i can stand here desiring a lot of things in my life and god is saying all those things that look far you can the word see here does not just mean view it uh -uh. it means capture it let it be your experience if you will believe believe and second chronicles chapter 20 and verse 20 guides us on the dimensions of believing second chronicles 20 20 and here's what he says Jehoshaphat stood and said hear me O Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem two believings here the first belief notice is a big B believe in the Lord your God that's the first dimension of your believing believe in the Lord your God to believe in the Lord does not just mean to agree that he's alive mm -mm. to believe in the Lord your God number one means to be convinced and convicted about who God really is and what he's able to do you don't just sit down and casually believe believe is a product of of a contemplation that happens in your spirit by the way let me advise you for a very long time we preachers have been telling people that believing just happens in your spirit believing must happen in your spirit your mind and your body the entire tripartite nature of man is involved in believing i guarantee you believe alone with your spirit you will never get anything your mind needs to get to that state too your body needs to participate it's a well-meaning teaching but it's not a complete teaching you believe God, spirit, soul, and body because your entire tripartite nature has a role to play in the manifestation of the promises of God for you. Believe in the Lord your God. Notice, it didn't say believe in Jesus. In fact, it didn't say believe in God. Believe in the Lord. When the Bible uses the word Lord, it's a very interesting expression because the, the word Lord there means is, is from the word adon it means master it means owner it means manipulator are we together yes believe in the lord your god get to a point by the spirit where you are convinced that he's not scamming you get to a point where you are convinced it's a point of unbendable persuasion that you believe that if God says he's going to change my family, truly he will. It's amazing how many action movies we act in church. You will think we really believe God. 
but we don't some of you as you are seated right now if i ask you do you believe god can change your life you will say yes just because your head was nodding up and down doesn't mean you believe are we together now it's a revelation man of god do you believe in the anointing yes i believe but it's not true because it's not showing the bible says if you believe you will see that means if you are not seeing there is something wrong with that believing are you getting what i'm saying you have to find a way of believing this conviction conviction that the spirit brings that you have gotten to a point of unbendable persuasion that everything god has said concerning my life now regardless of whether that experience listen you don't believe it when it manifests it should be obvious when it manifests you believe it to make it happen not because it has happened it is your faith that will transport that reality from the realm of the spirit i sit down and just tell you oh someone is going to shout for instance under the anointing that's a stupid thing what if it doesn't happen so what is the what what gives that audacity is suicidal for a man of god your, your reputation and your ministry is at stake you don't get up and just start speaking and saying things and talking nonsense i hope you know if it doesn't happen people will say you see this is how proud people end but there is a level of conviction conviction are we together now if i tell you sam to walk and come to me it is because you trust your legs are we together if i ask someone on a wheelchair to stand up and walk to me that person does not trust his legs yet because of the obvious situation so he won't stand up and he would try but if i ask you to come now you are not you don't have any experience with your legs that should disturb you you must get to that point of persuasion you see god is not a politician god was not voted into power it's not like there is somebody that supervises him in heaven he does not have a disciplinarian nobody rebukes him listen carefully we're talking about the god of the universe we're not talking about the god of christians we're talking about the god of all flesh god is not a christian he is the father of lights the owner it belongs to him god will not come on earth and go to the camp of christians the whole earth is his own whether you believe in him or not you face the consequence of fighting the creator but he is the god of all flesh has thou not heard has thou not seen the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth he doesn't sleep he doesn't get tired doesn't get weary so when that god looks at you with the same power of creation and says i want to change your life then we now sit down and say oh god that's exactly what my director told me and god said you have brought me in the same category with your director who is only 45 years old you know how old i am go and find out if age gives ability god still qualifies to be god even if it's just by age let's assume that the older you are the more powerful you are god is still god by that reference believe in the lord your god believe in the lord your god believe in the lord your god get to a point of persuasion and say lord based on my calculation it will take five years for my family to get this miracle but there's something i know about you that when you decide to rend the heavens and step over a man's situation one month becomes too much you see listen as you are hearing what i'm saying you are saying amen but something within me is saying you are not apostle don't make a fool out of yourself are we together now if a jimmy is a landlord of an estate and you are trusting god to save 30 million to buy a house and he looks at you and assuming you didn't know he was a landlord he just says kai i want to bless you 
and someone just whispers to you and says, that's the landlord. The awareness that is a landlord does something. You say, ah, sir, good afternoon. I, I'm not even, because you are aware. Something just opened you up to the potentials in him that he can compress a 10 years journey in a moment. This is the God I serve. The Bible says the word of God is quick. Shout quick. Not slow. It may look slow until God decides to shake himself and say, now let me lift Kenny. Now let me lift this. And you are surprised. Even you, the benefactor, there are sides to the equation of greatness no man can explain. It's a mystery. You just know I prayed. I did this from A to B to C. I don't know what happened there. I just know that a finger manipulated this. Are we together? Believe in the Lord. Many believers don't believe God. Many believers. It has to be in this order. Believe in the Lord your God. Believe what about him? Believe that he is God. You can believe he's a deity. That's not the information required for your greatness. You can believe that he's not a man. Satan too is not a man. Many other spirits too are not men. So there's nothing special about believing that he's not a man. You must believe that he's the mighty God. And you must believe in his ability. I don't know how to make you see this. Look, let me tell you, when you focus on God and who he is and his might, you will turn back and see the possibility of your situation shrinking before him. And then you will be brought to a point where you will agree, Lord, you can change my life, I believe. Lord, you can wipe my tears. There are many faithless people just because they are holding their Bibles and speaking what is written there. They think they believe. No! It's a conviction. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I believe you. That's why he left us the word of God to help us believe him. The word of God is a commitment from God to you. It's, it's, it's a manifesto. It's to give you room to vet him that means if you have any fears as to why you should not believe him, he still leaves the word. Are we together? Believe in the Lord your God. By doing so, you shall be established. So he says, be convinced and convicted about who God is. And what he's able to do. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 2 says, But I know whom I have believed. He says, I am persuaded that he is able. I am persuaded that he is able. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says, For without faith it is impossible to please God. Listen, he says, For he that cometh to God, like you have come now, it says you must come believing that he exists and then that he's a rewarder let me see how many of you came from far if you came from far let me see your hands how many of you honestly had quite a stressful journey coming now do you think please drop your hands thank you do you think that god will watch you live wherever you heard the, someone came from ghana Someone came from Maiduguri. So within and outside this nation, people coming, there are many people connecting from around the world. Do you believe if you were God, will you sit on your throne and watch someone almost have an accident and for 12 hours come and sit down? Some of you have been here probably since 12 in the afternoon or 2 or 3. And then as God, you sit down and then say, okay, share the grace. May God bless you. I don't know the God you gave your life to, but the one I gave my life to is a serious God. It's a very serious God. We are used to people playing games with our lives. God is not just a trustworthy God. He is too serious that he gave his son to die and then he will play games with your life. No, sir. He's a rewarder. He's a rewarder. Let me tell you something. You've heard me say it. If you ever find yourself coming here to koinonia that you are right here safely alone is a sign that half of your challenges have gone 
I'm, now, I, you would think I'm saying it just because I'm the man of God here. You decide to come here and see the attacks that will arise. Money that you are saving will disappear. All of a sudden, every, to some of you, the morning to come, you are not even yet sure whether you will come. It's a spirit. Believe in the Lord your God. Believe in the Lord your God. Believe in the Lord your God. Sister, believe in the Lord your God. My brother, believe in the Lord your God. Concerning your admission, believe in the Lord your God. Concerning the baby, I know it's five years, but believe in the Lord your God. Believe. Concerning God, turning your life around. You need more than a job. You need breakthrough. You need favor. If you get a job of 50,000, you are still backward. Because you should have been working for the past 10 years. So now, the issue is not just a job of 50 or 100,000. That God, can you shift my, what would have been the backlog of the past, shift my 10 years to enter my September and wait for me there. That I can enter September and I, I, it will look as if September is 10 years put together. One of the greatest ways breakthrough comes is the manipulation of time. Read your Bible and see what God did with time when it was time to visit people. He made the sun to stand still. He made the sun to go backward. Are we together? He did something to time. When you lose time, you have lost everything. Believe in the Lord your God. Number two. Please, let's go back to um, Second Chronicles. He said, believe in his prophets. Listen carefully. His prophets here doesn't just mean someone that prophesies. His prophets here doesn't even mean someone who is not fake. That means someone who is real. That's not what he's talking about. He said, believe his prophets. So shall ye prosper. To prosper means to do well. He says, believe his prophets. His prophets are not just people who prophesy. His prophets are not just real men of God. <clears throat> Listen carefully. This is where we miss it. You must learn this. His prophets here are not just men who are doing the biddings of God. It has nothing to do with maybe someone being real. His prophets here means the person sent to you listen listen the bible um come sam come darling look at this i'm elijah and i'm going to the house of a widow of zarephath are we together don't you think on my way going i'm going to meet other people who have problems so I meet a gentleman who has a problem and I just greet him. How are you? Where is the house of the widow of Zarephath? He's shaking me but doesn't receive anything because I'm not sent to him. I'm a prophet. I probably met other widows. Elijah probably met other widows lamenting and he said, Oh dear, you mean it? You mean this how your life is? Sorry, eh? And he kept going. The same way Jesus saw ten lepers. The same way Jesus would see people and touch one and stand up and go. There is a man sent to you. There is an anointing sent to you. Listen, I know that many people will not like me for what I'm telling you. Not every anointing can bless you. Generally speaking, by opening your heart, I mean at the anointing a portion to change your destiny. It's true. Hear what I'm telling you and then God will bless you. There is an anointing, a portion. There is a grace designated. Let me tell you, happy are you the day you come into the environment where the anointing that was sent for you. Do you know, let me tell you this, and I tell you this honestly, my heart is passionate when it has to do with blessing people. But I have met people in my life that I just prayed for them just for praying sake. But I knew in my spirit, I wasn't sent to them. 
of course you won't tell them so they don't feel bad but you know but i've seen others i could even wait for them to share their challenges because i know i know the anointing sends to you so believe his prophets are we together there were many widows in zarafath elijah was looking for just one haba prophet what of other women <clears throat> i love them i can pray i can intercede may god bless you do a b and c but i'm looking for a woman of zarafath where is she finally you find her and his clash is not even ready for you she's doing something else the prophet would have been angry to say i spent time to come here you don't even know what you are missing i'm on my way going but because he was sent he had to stay his assignment was to change her life when you find the anointing and the prophet that god has sent over your life and your situation let me tell you you will watch that anointing rubbish your situation in the as if satan does not exist it's, it's not just this is where we have a little challenge with many believers who just say the most important thing is God yes you are right but you are wrong the most anointing is anointing what is there what is so special about this man of God this is what I'm teaching you now people are sent to people even the word of God is sent he sent his word like a messenger meaning until that word is sent you can stay there but when the word comes like a messenger angel Gabriel left other believers around earth and was directed to one person Daniel all that fight for 21 days in the heavenlies he would have been angry to say I'm going to someone else mm -mm. he said Daniel I am come to give you understanding are you the only one I am come to give you understanding Jesus is appearing by the road Saul is on his way to Damascus brothers and sisters the Bible says there were other people with Saul God would have been fair enough to at least give them something and then he isolates one person and discusses with the person the rest just fall down and don't even know what threw them down they just got up to clean themselves and say Kai now what is all this one now whereas one person has that encounter sent 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 the word that changes my life sent i have had encounters with sent words and sent prophets and my god did my life change tonight let me tell you if you can believe this he said believe his prophets i know you are a businessman i know you are educated I know you are smart but there are many equations in this life that cannot be solved with pen and paper they are solved from the realm of the spirit it's only the results you receive here are we together now believe in his prophets so shall you prosper write this down please his prophet here is the vessel sent from him to you you must first acknowledge that this vessel is sent from God to you. And one of the ways that you can help yourself to believe the prophet God has sent to you is investigate the dealings of God with that man. Don't just believe for nothing. You have a right to investigate the dealings of God with that man. What is so special about this man? Why should I believe him? Why should I take the word that he's bringing seriously? Every true prophet of God has a track record of his dealings with God. Investigate the dealings of God. Study the track records of his results. I think it's unfair if you just yoke people to believe you just like that. No. Give them room. To study the track records of your result and find out whether the results are worth your believing how do you believe his prophets open up your spirit to receive both his grace and his instructions 
don't just receive the grace alone instructions many times believers miss it because we miss instructions very subtle instructions sometimes very ego stinging instructions like you were seated here now and then i just said everybody shout jesus you know i don't mean to embarrass your intelligence you don't sit on a seat and shout jesus you've been singing a song before you came here you there was jesus more than 10 times in that song you kept shouting jesus jesus lover of my soul and nothing happened and here you are sitting and a man is saying just shout jesus once if you don't have this revelation you can sit down and say please what is we are not children here what is all this nonsense he told Naaman, go to Jordan, wash seven times. J Naaman said, me? Jordan, there are clean rivers somewhere. And the small girl said, you are the one in trouble. If you don't go and wash, you can go back with your leprosy. Two scriptures, and then we'll pray. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 31. and israel saw the great work which the lord did upon the egyptians it says and the people feared the lord and believed the lord and also what his servant moses god performs mighty things and creates that track record not just so that he alone will be believed God also wants the vessel he's using to be believed. The Bible says they feared the Lord. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. You believe the Lord, you don't believe his servant, you may not get any miracle. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, Look up, please. Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. That means I can talk to you without the cloud, but I keep that cloud as that evidence so that the people can trust that it is me you are talking to. I'm, I'm going that far because I don't just want the people to believe me alone. I want them to believe you too because their receiving is dependent on their both their believing me, God, and their believing you, his servant. He says, and the Lord said, I come in a thick cloud. So sometimes when God does some of these signs and wonders, it's, it's not really just for him alone. When God does some of these things, oh, there's a lady here and someone is shouting. Another, you know what God is doing? He's using those things. It's, it's a similitude of the cloud to help you see. You can call somebody and say, who is grace or who is um, victory? And you can say, this is just guessing. I'm sure it's just guessing. But how do you guess that someone in this direction do you guess that one god does some of these things sometimes purposely to just address the the leftover of unbelief because you see some of us are coming from different christian experiences some of us have been our minds have been messed up by all kinds of theology all kinds of philosophies some of us have had bad experiences with all kinds of men of god prophets and whatever and chances are that when you come like this usually you will just add the man of god to the list of all the people and hope that he's just a better version of them and god says not so and he uses these signs to speak to you that you are in mount zion are we together it's amazing how a little miracle can just readjust your unbelief immediately. Readjust your unbelief while the devil is trying to lie to you. Can your life be changed all of a sudden? The, the power will touch the person near you. This somebody you shook hands with, turn to your neighbor and say this and that. So you know that the person, uh, the person can be acting. It's a very difficult thing for believers to believe God. 
but I think it's even harder to believe a man of God and people have all kinds of justifications as to why they shouldn't believe men of God but regardless of what your justifications are if you believe God and don't believe the vessel you will be established but you will not prosper are we together your prosperity is what gives evidence to your establishment you must believe one word from God can turn your life around one prophetic word can turn your life around all these strange spirits that oppress people they don't just go because they are told to go no it takes the anointing I was talking with one of the protocol uh, people when we were coming down here and I told him I was shaking my head and then I was talking to him and I said I am amazed driving down to come for the miracle service now I said I am amazed at how people in Africa and Nigeria trivialize success I am shocked at how people um, believe that success is about luck it's amazing how people can see a huge sacrifice and trivialize it and just make it look like I think these people are just fortunate is that true I, I, this were my contemplations while I was coming listen there's no result that happens in this kingdom by mistake now including the testimony you are about to have that gentleman from Ghana he did not just press this thing and found my name no 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 the anointing that is sent with that word works day or night are we together now there are many testimonies just like his, that gentleman. You see that now. Someone will tell you I was sitting and I had a dream. How about those who buy new phones, brand new phones, brand new phones, and then they open it and see koinonia messages inside. How do you explain that? A new phone. Not new, uh, what do they call that thing? not new memory card i'm not talking about new memory card a new phone that you bought it tear rubber you are the one who opened it then the first thing you see inside is a message that answers your question who who now who, how do you explain that listen listen we live in a world that is not natural it only manifests the spiritual naturally the, the 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 earlier you got this the better my brothers and my sisters hear me all that you see in this world is only a reflection say reflection the real control room in this our world is the realm of the spirit whoever can ascend this three-dimensional realm has the advantage of victory nothing happens that is physical are we together one of the reasons why many of us are seated here tonight among the many miracles we desire is finance oh nigerians finance you want to talk a good news to any honest nigerian right now in this day and age as we transit into the ember month no matter speak about their spiritual life yes speak about their love for god passion new depths but please don't ignore that other one just even if it's in passing just say something about it finance many people want to see financial breakthrough many people are working and they are trusting god for breakthrough and remember the strange thing about finance do you know why listen i'm not talking about money we're going to pray shortly do you know why many believers are poor because in the kingdom finance is warfare money is not just an instrument to live well it's a weapon see listen oh dear what's it ecclesiastes 7 let me just talk a little you was uh I, I didn't plan to say this but Ecclesiastes 7 verse 12 let me show you something may God give somebody deliverance right now read it read it one to read for wisdom is a defense uh-huh and money is a defense just stop there so we know from the word that both wisdom and money is a defense now look up when the Bible says you have a weapon what is a weapon something you use to both defend yourself and you can use also for attack is that true 
if you give me a weapon like a shield i use it for defense and the bible says one of the many weapons money is one of them and the bible says those weapons are not carnal the word not carnal means they are not man-made but my brother my sister this thing is man-made it was made by cbn that means this is not what god is talking about because this is man-made but the bible says this weapon that he calls money is not carnal he said it is mighty through god that means there is a spirit are you getting what i'm saying that means this thing is only the body the same way human being is called currency anything that moves is a living thing and that means there is a spirit inside the body to move it you are only seeing the body where is the spirit that moves it that's why it can enter a house you didn't ask it to go and it will go out by itself it can enter your account and still go out because it's warfare the bible says, believe is prophets there is something they can do that can do something to the many things including this This is what we chase all around because we think this is paper. No, this is not, this is paper, yes, but there is a spirit behind it and this thing respects that spirit. This is what you need to understand. So the spirit can instruct it to leave you and it can leave no matter how hardworking you are. You can receive salary and all you have is part of this left and it can be instructed to leave you it will, you know it's going it's going out of your life it just touches your hand and disappears because the weapons prosperity is warfare it's not just about money to buy car and houses money is a defense it can defend the gospel it can defend a man and the bible says all those weapons they are not carnal So if you ever see this looking for anybody, Naira does not look for men. Something makes it come. I, please, are you getting what I'm saying? If you can understand this alone, at least even if you don't know how it comes, you already know that it doesn't come by itself. These are the mysteries that surround our kingdom. You ever see anybody prosperous in the kingdom? My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. This is a spiritual realm. You don't have to be a Christian to believe it. You just have to be alive. This is a spiritual realm. Animals know it. Plants know it's a spiritual realm. That's why you throw a seed in the ground and you cover it. You don't leave it open. You cover it. Because what happens there is none of your business. Now you just cover it and watch it happen. And it grows to become a tree that you cannot push down. A little seed. When you planted it, it had no roots. The Bible says, just like you do not know the way of the wind, nor how a woman, how a child is formed in the womb of her that is with child, you know, and all of that, so also you don't know the way of God. The Lord brought you here tonight because there are spiritual possibilities, listen, that are beyond the realm of the eyes. Are we together? Most times we believe only what we can see and understand and explain. Unfortunately, in this kingdom, there are things that you may not be able to explain. When people come here to testify, you see me sit quietly and I watch. And many times I'm in shock as I watch the immutability of God's power in the lives of people. The same way you are going to come up here to testify. Yes, it's true. What suddenly happens to you and then you have someone just call you and say we are sending you to US to get a job. 
Hapa, my brothers and my sisters, I've told you again and again that everybody who helps you has relatives too who are in need. Whatever makes you to leave them and come to you is not normal. That you're sitting and someone says, I'm thinking of you. Who do you think you are? No. I want to help you. I want to bless you. You step into prepared blessings. Blessings that you are as sure. He said, Master, we have toiled all night. And Jesus looked at them. You know how to fish by waiting in the night and allowing the fish to come and rest on your net. Then you quickly pull it in the morning. That's how you were trained. But let me show you another technology. Cast your net to the right side. Master, but we only have left and right. <clears throat> this one is not brain work now. This one is not one plus one. I told you one plus one plus God is equal to whatever he says the answer should be. One plus one is two. But one plus one plus God is not equal to two. It's not even equal to 10,000. It's equal to any answer that God puts there. So one plus one can be equal infinity. God said so. Are we together now? I'm saying this to build your faith tonight so that you will believe that God is able to do anything at all. When you look at the way you got to hear about this ministry and the various ways the Holy Spirit worked with you till you came today, you should know already that there is a God in heaven. Are we together now? Brothers and sisters, I present to you this same God who can change your life, who will change your life. I'm saying this so that you don't just sit down and be clapping for others. Wow, this is how God has changed this lady's life. Wow, we are soon going to pray. You must have a desperation and say, Lord, I didn't come tonight to clap for anybody. I left my journey wherever. Lord, I know that you will visit me. And I hold on to the horns of the altar. While you are sitting, the devil is telling you, remember tomorrow by 12, your rent or embarrassment. Say, Satan, go away. I'm before the presence of God. Tomorrow is too far. God can. How many minutes does it take to do a transfer? I believe him. Yes, I do. I believe him. I believe him. I believe him. I believe he can change my life. In one minute, I want you to just mention everything you are trusting God to do tonight. Go ahead. Lord, I believe you for this. I believe you for that. Those outside, whether you are standing by the wall, whether you are standing in any of the overflows, and those following online, release your faith. Don't be distracted. Any spirit that distracts you in this moment now is of the devil. It's a Luciferian spirit. Let your spirit and let your attention be open. Yes, Lord, I believe you. Mention it. Don't say it's too big. That's the devil. Too big compared to what? Pray, believers. Lord, I know you are able. You are able to take away this reproach from this family. Talk to Jesus. Even if you find yourself crying, just continue to speak. Lord, you are able. Change this situation. Turn my academics around. Lord, turn my finances around. Lord, I'm in a situation right now where only you, the God of heaven, can arise. Turn my ministry around. Lord, I'm confused. I don't even know where to go right now. I don't know whether to go to the left or to the right, but I receive grace. Pray. Shalakato are you praying kill on belief as you are praying don't let the devil tell you you are wasting your time God of heaven
give praise. It says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and by supplication, with thanksgiving. It says, Make your request known. Don't assume it is known. Make your request known. Lord, I'm here tonight because I want you to turn the situation of my family around. Lord, there is a death sentence over my family and you have to arise for me tonight. Lord, there is a death sentence over my life. Lord, I've been delayed 10 years of my life. I am backward 10 years. There has to be a way you restore me, oh God. Lord, I'm trusting you for the fruit of the womb. The gentleman who came here, seven children lost, including twins. Lord, I'm trusting you to refire my spiritual life. Something has happened to the anointing upon my life. Something has happened to the glory upon my destiny. I'm here tonight, oh God, turn my life around. Turn my life around. Something has happened. The signs and wonders are no more like before. The revelation and the grace and the utterance is not like before. I'm here for a turnaround, oh God. My prayer life has died. I'm here for a reawakening. I no longer fast. I no longer pray. I don't know what has happened to me. I cry for help. Hallelujah. One more prayer point. Lord, I believe you and I believe your servant. I believe that anointing and I believe in its ability to turn my life around. Walk on any unbelief in my heart, oh God, and take it out tonight. Go ahead and pray. Every spirit of doubt, every spirit of fear. Isaiah 61 please participate in everything we are doing it's going to be a very fast one but let your spirit be open the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord the same Lord that you are instructed to believe hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted now listen this is why he anointed me. Because there is an agenda. But that that agenda cannot be achieved just by a well-meaning heart. It takes more than sincerity to bind up a broken heart. To proclaim liberty. Now I like this one. To proclaim. To declare that the time has come for you to walk free. It says, and the opening of prison. My brothers and my sisters, there can be men physically walking but they are in prison. Next verse. Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn. It takes more than a handkerchief to comfort men. It takes the anointing. Verse 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion 
now this is the part I like to give them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning hallelujah the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified so the end of it is for God to be glorified but not in the current state no so anything in your family make sure you carry your family along in this miracle service don't just stand alone to receive I've told you if you are blessed and your family members are not blessed you are not free you are not free at all if you are the only one who is alive and everybody is just dying like a chicken you are still not free are we together now thank you Jesus Christ let me give us one last prayer point father every desire I brought here tonight I'm not walking back with it lift your voice and pray every let your faith rise as you pray. Shalakata barakato. Talato shabra hasikete malakata. Shakata kata barakata barateke teberekos. Every desire. Visit me, O oh God, completely. The God who touches my spiritual life can touch my finances too. The God who touches my body can touch my womb too. Lord, I insist. I insist for completeness. comes upon your life right now then the Lord okay I want to pray a prayer now please be your brother's keeper whether you are inside or outside is because of what will happen when I pray the anointing will come and people will act out what I'm saying physically that's why I'm saying you should you should just hold them are we together now the Lord is asking me to release speed. Listen, speed is a very powerful thing. When that anointing comes, you will start running like Elijah. That's why I'm saying, hold them. Right now, I stretch my hands inside, outside, online, and I declare, Spirit of the living God, there are men and women here who have been delayed, and speed must come upon them. Right now, I declare at the count of three, one, two, three, receive that grace. I command speed, speed right now, speed, let the hand of God come upon you. The Bible says the hand of the Lord 
was upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. I command speed, receive it. It's coming on you now. Some of you is coming on you for the sake of your family. It's not just you alone. It's coming on you for the sake of your family. Let the chains be broken. I release speed. Speed. In one month. In one month. I'm prophesying that in one month, what has not been done in five years, in one month, receive that grace. I energize your spirit, man. Speed. When speed comes upon a family, you will see it in the result. When speed comes upon your spiritual life, when speed comes upon your academics, I'm praying again. The angels that ride upon the chariots are bringing you speed. I release that grace. Let that anointing come upon you. Speed. Speed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Speed. Shalakato sadakata. Sheketo kata shalakato ziata. Now listen, fire in the spirit has many significance. Fire, this fire is a mystery. It was a reality borrowed from the realm of the spirit that we use here. Fire does not run away from any element. Fire is the only thing that all other elements must fit. Whether you put metal, the metal will be hot. Wood will be burnt rubber will be melted there is nothing that stands fire other things can stand water but not fire are we together now he said he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire when the holy spirit listen is moving to break chains he moves as fire do you know why because fire destroys every other thing yet it is not destroyed it is not solid it is not liquid are we together it looks like gas but it's there you are seeing it you can't hold it you can't cage fire you can't lock it up it's not restrained by anything the holy ghost is going to move right now in this place as fire listen this fire i want you to bring those people out this fire you see will bring an end now believe me when i tell you this will bring an end to many captivities many captivities at the count of three i just want you to shout with me that word fire that word fire and many of you will be surprised in the name of jesus where sam there's a song in my spirit when we sing that song what's the name of that song blow 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 like a mighty wind am i correct so you know what i'm talking about so you sing that song by the time we pray in the name of Jesus I'm stretching my hands right now Spirit of the Lord you seek to reveal yourself as fire that consuming fire no power and no spirit even spirits can be burnt by fire in the name of Jesus I declare that any operation that is not of God at the count of three by the mystery of the Holy Ghost as fire let there be deliverance let there be refining let there be the breaking of chains are you ready now one two three bring them out fire the mystery of fire Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Cover us with 
I declare any chain, if there is anyone under the sound of my voice, and any chain has held your destiny by the mystery of this fire, I'm speaking by this apostolic and prophetic grace. I decree and declare to the heavens at the count of three, may that fire locate chains in this place now. One, two, three, chains be broken. Chains be broken. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Sing below, Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Hallelujah. Madam, please clear the way for me. This woman, tap this woman for me. One, two, and the other person, three. Please come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. You are welcome. Your first time here? I came here last week. Okay, you were here last week and you too. Um, is, this the, is this the mama I asked to come? I think it's someone else I saw, but when you are here, we'll honor you. But I want to pray for you. Madam, look at me. I'm seeing witchcraft in your life and your family. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? You are coming from Abuja. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, man. Look at me. I know you believe in the power of God. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end every oppression of darkness. Mama, I decree and declare, in one month, your life will turn around it will surprise you. In one month. In the name of Jesus Christ, where is that man that came from my Duguri? The one who came to give a testimony. Mama, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying I should tell you that the oppression is over. Look, I'm seeing fire. It's leaving my hands and it's coming upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, where is that man? We have to hurry up. There's, there's a lot to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I decree and declare over your life. That fire. The Lord, it looks like you are an elderly woman, but the Lord is going to use you mightily. What you are receiving now is not just a miracle yet. You are receiving an impartation. You will begin to know the Holy Spirit in a very intimate way. Hold my hand. Spirit of the living God, you seek to use this dear mother. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will know the Holy Spirit in supernatural ways. His fire will come upon your life and he will use you in a very mighty way. In the name of Jesus, come. You are the man that came from Eduguri. What is this? I see being an 
your CV. You are trusting God for a job. And who is this? Hold it. Do you believe that if I pray for you, you are returning with a job? You believe that? Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I release the anointing upon you and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let there be that miracle. You go and return with your job, sir. Let me pray for you, man. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you and I declare that the oppression of darkness comes to an end. A complete end over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray right now, but let me just... Um, the Lord is showing me, okay, sometimes this time, time, time just affects you. But I'm praying right now and I'm seeing letters and I'm seeing on the letter, congratulations, listen. And I'm seeing that this is a symbolism of breakthrough. Listen, let me tell you, except God is not God, if this anointing that I'm seeing touches you, then you and your family must stand here and testify. I'm stretching my hands right now. Lord, you are showing me this. In the name of Jesus, this is a symbol of breakthrough. I stretch my hands. Every family and every person that must receive of this grace, I'm stretching my hands now. You must testify. I release upon you that grace you must testify I declare whatever it will translate to whether a job whether increase whether promotion I command it I declare it I decree it. in the name of Jesus I command it I decree it I declare it right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hold the hands of this lady this one hold the hands of this lady in the name of Jesus Christ I stretch my hands right now and I declare it's time for your family to rise I'm speaking it by the spirit of prophecy and I decree and declare every embargo that holds on to that family I command that is gone now in the name of Jesus it is gone I curse the power of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ stretch your hands towards me your hand is a symbol of your productivity and there are many of you there is no grace on the works of your hands I look and in the spirit I don't see the blessing of the Lord working that's what is responsible for hardship it's not like you are not employed or you are not doing this, but in the name of Jesus, I stand representing the Spirit of God and I stretch my hands back to you. I'm declaring still that ministry of fire. Many of you will be surprised. Whatever it is you are involved in, God is about to bring grace upon it. I stretch my hands right now at the count of three. May the fire of God come through your hands into your life. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus whatever has not been working in your life I force it to work right now receive that anointing I force it to work now inside outside I force it to work now those following online I pray and I speak whatever it is that you are doing I declare the blessing I activate the blessing upon the work of your hand I take away hardship from your life in the name of Jesus Christ I take away hardship from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, 
The Lord is opening the eyes of people into where your blessing is. I'm seeing fire, still this fire thing coming on the eyes of people physically. You will feel fire burning and ideas. The Lord is birthing things. Is is a birthing in the spirit. I release that grace right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, all those who must see, show them, oh God, where their blessings are stationed so that they stop dilly-dallying around life. I decree and declare, receive that grace, the grace of an open eye, the grace of an open vision. May the Lord show you where the resources of your destiny is. May the Lord show you where your helpers are. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This, the prayer is for everybody, eh? But this particular prayer now is for ladies. The Lord is showing me destinies that must be changed. Outwardly, you are beautiful, you are good looking, you are virtuous, you are wonderful. But in the realm of the spirit, it's not what we are seeing physically that we are seeing in the, in the realm of the spirit. A man with an ugly situation sat down at a gate called beautiful. The gate was beautiful, but the man's life was nonsense. There are many people you can stand. I'm, I'm saying everybody, but this is specifically for our sisters. And it's not just the issue of marriage. I'm not talking about marriage alone. That there is a fragrance, a presence that can ooze from you and bring favor to your life. But many of you physically, they look at you and you look like you are beautiful, you are this, you are that. But in the realm of the spirit, there are powers sitting on people's destiny. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. That, that force, that veil must be torn. In the name of Jesus, ah, I'm seeing a strange grace that is coming on many people, especially our sisters. I declare any wrong identity that you are given in the realm of the spirit that is not a reflection of your true identity, any exchange that has been made in the realm of the spirit so that physically you should be blessed but in the realm of the spirit you are carrying another person's destiny right now by the fire of the holy ghost sisters may that anointing come upon you now may that grace come upon you now i declare anyone's destiny here that has been changed and switched and manipulated in the realm of the spirit so that what you look like is not a reflection of what your destiny is I change it now in the name of Jesus I change it now in the name of Jesus listen a man's destiny can be exchanged it's true have you not read in the Bible where kings slaughtered their children to prolong their own lives? A man's destiny can be a shadow of something else. You know you are alive, but this is not your life. You know that you are living another person's script. I'm saying it again. In the name that is above all names. Sir, come. I don't know you but I want to pray for you sir God is going to turn your life around and you see this prayer that I'm saying generally this prayer sir is for you you are a shadow of your life of your is your dad where did he come from from high in the air from where from high in the air daddy I'm going to pray for you this is not just about your leg huh this is about your destiny I want to pray for you hold my hands sir. father in the name of Jesus Christ, 
I declare Mande Kreskoda Hashabari Katoskada Natoskada Natoskada Mashada Kata Empreke Teko Toko Toba Sada Balakata Shapreske Teke Teke Teba Lakata Shapriata Kata In the name of Jesus Anyone who has exchanged your destiny sir I decree and declare restoration now You are the daughter hold my hands I pray for you look at me You are a wonderful lady huh? But bad things continue to happen in your life. Huh? You are a nice lady. Are you married? I'm married with that one. Don't worry. I know why I'm saying. You get what I'm saying now? Yes, sir. Because what I'm seeing, this is a spirit. You are a nice lady, but people continue to misunderstand you. Yes, sir. Yes, Good sir. things and people look at you. In the eye of many people now, you are, you are a devil. You are a terrible lady, yes, but it's sir. not true. Yes. You have a very beautiful heart. This is what happens... When do you know that there are spirits that make sure you are misrepresented in the eyes of people? A ministry can be under this captivity. No matter, the Bible said, don't let your good be evil spoken of. You can be nice to somebody like it's happening to many of you. And people end up fighting you. You bought something for them and they end up, you are saying, what is this? I pray for you and the person says, so you are trying to say I'm the one who is not spiritual. It's a spirit. My dear, I want to pray for you. Eh? This thing is not just about your marriage that is, you know, things have gone wrong. You are a wonderful lady. Eh? Favor will come close to you but then never enter your life. Yes, sir. Yes, what do sir. you do? I'm working in a security. You are a security? Yes, sir. Did you go to school? Yes, sir. I'm running my master's. You are running your masters. Yes, sir. My dear, do you believe God can change your life yes, now? Yes, sir. I believe, sir. Hold my hands. To appoint unto them. You see that? To appoint. This one is a prophet's reward. It's not just that God is saying do this. There is something in the spirit called a prophet's reward. The possibilities that accompany an office, I declare in the name of the God of heaven whom I represent, may your life change this night in a way that will surprise you. Listen, I lift you from this security work you are doing and I put you in a position that befits your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, Daddy sir, I'm praying for your daughter in your presence. This lady will come here and give a testimony that even you as a father who said this one is the Lord's doing. Are we together now? I declare it, I decree it done right now. Hear me. I don't care whether you are working or not. If you are not in the rightful place as ordained by God, I want to pray a very serious prayer because there are people, the work you are doing is a nonsense work. That work is, it has robbed your spiritual life. It has destroyed your relationship. Because of that work, no man can see you to marry you demonic work that closes you everywhere i decree and declare i stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace if you are in a place that is not your assigned place of destiny i take you out of that place and i shift you to the place of destiny i shift i shift you in the spirit i shift you by prophecy in the name of jesus christ Listen, if the widow of Zarephath was not where the prophet met her, that's how her miracle would have gone. It matters that you are in the right place at the time God sends your miracle. Some of these things in the name of employment, they are traps of the devil. I'm not saying it's not good to work, don't get me wrong. But many of them are traps from the peace of hell. There are people whose spiritual lives have gone down from heaven to earth. Simply in the name of job. Are we together? Nonsense job that on Sunday you're on your way going to church, your boss calls you and says you must come and resume. What shall it profit a man if you gain the... What is it? Is that the whole world? How much is the salary? Lose your soul for peanuts. I declare again, in the name of Jesus, 
may my God relocate someone here by the power of the Holy Spirit may my God relocate a destiny relocate a family if you are not in your assigned place I shift you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ Do you know, listen, we are going to pray for the sick shortly. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, he will make sure they get visa. Ah, Pastor Jay, it's good to see you. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, they will get visa to UK. They think it's breakthrough, but they have gone away from their place of destiny. God spoke to Jonah, go to Nineveh. Jonah entered a boat on his way to Tarsus. And because of that wrong journey, people lost their properties. People lost. He entered a boat and made people to start destroying their lives. They were almost dying because a man was not in sync with seasons. Let me tell you this. It matters that God meets you at the place where your blessing is waiting for you. The devil can relocate people and, and destroy your life. There are many Nigerians outside this country whose destiny is ordained by God to be in this country. You see them roaming around like armed robbers around the world in the name of abroad. And there are others whose destinies are abroad and the devil will make sure that he will peg them somewhere. And Isaac sowed in that land. It's not just that he sowed. The place he sowed matters. Isaac sowed in that land. Abraham, take now thy son and go. Go to a location. That's where I will meet with you. God is everywhere. But destiny does not meet with men everywhere. You must have the discernment to understand your season of visitation. I repeat this. You see me speaking like this. I'm speaking by the Spirit. There are some of you, it's an instruction from God to you. Don't be careless about your life. Look at how many Nigerians, you go to embassies and see Nigerians, they want to go abroad by fire, by force. Ask them why. They will say greener pastures. I've told you, greener pastures is not in any physical location on earth. Greener pastures is in the world. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Not when you went. Jesus instructed them and said, do not go. Go only to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that camp. Because salvation was for the Jews first. If they went to the Gentiles, they would have received a root shock. Direction. Direction. Please, in one minute before we pray for the sick, lift your voice and say, Lord, direct me. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Direct me. There is a way that seemed right unto a man, unto a woman, unto a family. Direction. Your blessing is not just generically in US or UK. There are people suffering in every nation. It takes the leadership of the spirit. Jesus one more time in the name of Jesus every force stopping my helpers from reaching me through bad reports through divination through misguided reports I command in the name of Jesus that the Lord is against you release my helpers to my destiny lift your voice and pray please pray whether you understand what you are praying or not pray open your mouth and pray Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yet the set time, the set time, set time, the set time. Shabbat 
Hallelujah. I like you to pray this one with all your heart. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit. Every spirit that makes men trivialize my gifting. That, that make men trivialize the anointing on my life. That makes men trivialize what God is doing to me. I come against you right now. In the name of Jesus. It's my season of celebration. Lift your voice and prophesy. The spirit that causes men to trivialize what you represent. To trivialize what God is doing in your life. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus, everything that should be in my life now and was hijacked by the enemy, I place a demand in the name of Jesus. Locate my destiny now. Lift your voice and pray. Pray, pray, lift your voice and pray. Like the bones in the valley of the city, I command let bones be joined to bones. Opportunity joined to opportunity. Favor joined to favor. Say after me in the name of Jesus Every force of darkness Programmed to kill my prayer life Programmed to kill my passion for God Programmed to kill my appetite for the world I come against you right now Lift your voice and redeem your prayer life Lift your voice and redeem your, your world life Hallelujah. Everyone who pray this, but the brothers, I want you to pray this. Praise the Lord. Brothers, when we raise this prayer and I see any brother looking at me and you are not praying, I walk up to you and hold your hand. It's a serious prayer. Say in the name of Jesus, the grace for speedy establishment. Lord, release it upon my life. Lift your voice and pray. The grace that causes men to be established on time. There is a cause of darkness that causes men to be established late. At 40, you are still in your father's house. At 40, you are still living from hand to mouth. It's a cause. Please pray. Please help us on the earth. Establish me. Send me help from Zion. Establish me on time, on time, on time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
everyone pray this but I want our sisters to pray this with all your heart. Say in the name of Jesus. Jesus. The spirit of unnecessary lateness. The spirit of unnecessary lateness. Lateness in life. Financial lateness. I curse you in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. It should happen on time. It should happen on time. There is a time allocated. Every time is not convenient. There is a time allocated. name of Jesus in the name of Jesus father, father I know it is within your power I know it is to your turn power. my life around I ask you in the name of Jesus turn my life around lift your voice and pray change my story to my life around pray pray do a new thing do a new thing what has not been done before not the same kind of miracle not the same kind of breakthrough do a new thing something that has never happened before do a new thing change my life turn it around oh God Let me add this one more prayer. He says, Son of man, can this bone live again? And the prophet said, Honestly, I've been a prophet. So prophesying is not something that is new, but this for this case, I don't know. And then he said, Prophesy. He didn't say discuss, he didn't say cry. In one minute, I'm not going to tell you what to say, but I want you to stand and look at your destiny. I want you to prophesy, carry the word of God like a drug, put it on your destiny. My destiny, I speak to you. You are alive, hear the word of the Lord. I command you to rise, I command you to grow. I program faith for you. Pray. I program breakthrough in you. I prophesy to you. In the name of Jesus, I speak to my destiny. You are a manifestation of the word of God. You are a manifestation of the faith of God. You are the manifestation of the goodness of God. I take away pain from my destiny. I take away regrets from my destiny. I take away sorrow from my destiny. I prophesy goodness. I prophesy joy unspeakable, full of glory.
please lift your hands. You sit down shortly, lift your hands. In the name of Jesus, you are prayed. I decree over your life. The Lord has declared that this is the year of triumph. We are angry and we are insisting that it must happen. Therefore, I decree and I declare that if there is anyone under the sound of my voice, under any kind of siege, that will not let you see the faithfulness of God, I decree and I declare right now, that power leaves your life right now. That force leaves your life right now. Hallelujah. We're about to listen to the word. While your hands are lifted, I want to do an impartation of understanding. Listen, most people think they know, they understand scripture. It's not true. I decree and I declare, I stretch my hands towards you. May the spirit of understanding, capacity to comprehend the systems of the kingdom, I release it upon you right now. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. I open your understanding. I open your understanding. I open your understanding. I command your mind to be receptive. I decree that your spirit will be the signal in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down if you can. God bless you. Good evening. Brothers and sisters, the weeks that are coming will really mean business. You know, I've been saying this. I know it in my spirit when a reality has been declared to manifest from the realm of the heavens. But you know that it is not yet your experience. There is no believer who sits down knowing what God has ordained for your life. And watching the enemy play games with your life and you sit down and hope things will change no sir you have to engage with understanding engage with understanding until that which is yours comes to you the Bible says right from the days of John the Baptist and until now it says the kingdom suffered violent and the violent the violent spiritually violent those who will insist and say I'm not taking anything less than this promise of God's word they are the ones who take it by force I am passionate about results I never never associate with anything that does not have capacity to produce results I am a result driven person this is a result driven ministry the fierceness of life does not allow for stories and grammar people want real results in their lives and let me tell you this if you're a man of God here listen to me no matter what you claim to be doing if it does not translate into genuine results you are wasting people's time it's as simple as that herein is our father glorified 15 verse 8 John hearing this is how God takes glory from men when ye bear much fruit when your results are notable beyond argument notable beyond sentiment he said by so doing you will prove that you are my disciples you will prove that you have sat down under my mentorship and tutelage your results validate the efficacy of the teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit when our lives are barren of certain dimensions of results is an indictment on the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit results that defy background results that defy the expectations of naysayers and men and women who look forward to your failure as their self-fulfilling prophecy but you must contend for it 
Hallelujah. I've been thinking, do you know, I've been thinking about you all through the week. My mind has just been, Lord, there are dimensions that we must enter before the end of this year. The word of God will not go void. When God speaks, it is within his power to make it happen. Are we together? But it has always been a partnership. It's always been that way. That the heavens must partner with the earth for realities to be established here. And so, my assignment is to scan through and make sure that we tie every loose end that can force or that can, can sabotage this prophecy from finding expression. My job is to search and find out and to remind us and indoctrinate us with the truths that are capable of bringing results. Results that are predictable. Results that are consistent. Results that have nothing to do with the wishes of men. Hearing is our Father glorified. Hearing. If you have ever wondered how God takes glory from men, this is how it happens. When you bear much fruit, much fruit, much fruit, not little fruit, much fruit. When results become, um, become notable, notable and consistent, it will compel any force of darkness, regardless of sentiment, to know that the hand of God is upon your life. Hallelujah. Every dimension in the spirit has a price. Every level, every dimension of greatness has a price. And by the grace of God, he has granted us this privilege as a ministry to laboriously open God's people to the demands, the price requirement, the cost dimension of certain results that we need. I am passionate about connecting people's desires to the formula and the principles that have been designed for those outcomes to manifest. It is one thing, if you can tell me what you want, if you can tell me what you desire, I can show you the mystery that is allocated for that result. There is a price. I wish everything were, would just happen without your cooperation. But that's not the way the system of God works. There is a price. The price we are talking about is the price of alignment. The price of partnership. Because you see, the operation of the system of the kingdom as we have learned is such that it comes by grace but it says through faith they are not the same thing by grace made available through faith the summation of your partnership that causes that reality that is available grace makes it available it creates the possibility but your engaging the word accordingly makes it your experience. Grace does not make it your experience. Grace opens it up. It lets you know that this is a possibility contained in God. I've shared it with you that the grace of God is not redemption. No, redemption is a subset of God's grace. God's grace is a generic description of any and everything that only God can provide. It's called his grace. So the anointing is God's grace. His mercy is a dimension of his grace. His love is a dimension of his grace. Any possibility that should be the experience of men that can only be provided for by God is his grace. Grace never makes it your experience. It creates the potential for redemption, for healing, for blessing, for increase for multiplication but then it takes faith and most people have thought that 
the only aspect of faith is to believe and confess no sir mm -mm. Mm -mm. no that's only an aspect of faith faith is a generic name given to everything that involves the partnership of man the first key to partnership is finding out the formula god has provided for receiving that miracle understanding it by the help of the spirit and then taking relevant steps in accordance to what he has said this is what the bible calls faith believing is only an aspect of faith confessing is only an aspect of faith that's not all there is to it if you stop there you will be in total shock you can believe that prosperity is your heritage you can confess it is your heritage and stop and don't engage the other forces and you will remain in poverty and penury forever you can believe is god's desire for you to be great listen carefully you can confess that it is god's desire for you to be great and not engage the other forces of greatness value relationships skill and find out you never rest. are we together now yes so when we learn the systems of the kingdom we are bringing ourselves to the point of faith where we are able to act with understanding and intelligence it is only when our obedience is complete that we commit god's integrity and then he is compelled to make it happen this is how angels work angels don't work at random angels signify things revelations 1 verse 1 the bible says the revelation of jesus christ which he gave unto his servant john he said and he sent it and signified it by his angel angels act in accordance to understanding their action accredits that you are doing something right so they don't just act at random just because they are there no there is what to do that engages them because they are governed they are supervised by the holy spirit it is the office of the holy spirit that supervises the operation of angels they don't just move anyhow and do everything that your eyes are open in the realm of the spirit and you see them near you is no guarantee they will rescue you hallelujah is god speaking to us and so we must find out the things that we need to understand to help us excel brothers and sisters god sees my heart and how much passion that i have to see every one of us rise i will share with us a few things most of them recaps so that we re-evaluate whether we have been practicing these things and then we'll pray are you ready hmm. the first prize for doing business with god and making any name and anything that is sustainable on earth please write it down if there is a title for this thing i will call it the price wherever we stop i'm i'm re we are going back to the laws the systems of the kingdom there is no other way to get results than a comprehension a working knowledge and understanding of the systems of the kingdom alongside how we are to engage them this is how results are produced the first price is the price of intimacy the price of intimacy the price of intimacy make a mark in the sand of time God's way if you are unwilling to pay the price to know God the price of intimacy is not the price of praying in tongues it's not just the price of fasting it's the price to know God the price to know God the price to know God write it down the price of intimacy is the requirement that causes a man to have a relationship with God Daniel 11 verse 32 thank you Jesus
it says but the people that do know know the word know there you've heard me say it again and again it's not just the word aware that you are aware god exists does not mean you know him are we together now pastor alpha knows me pastor femi knows me correct promise knows me kenny they know me but i'm not sure any of them know me as much as a jimmy why because we have spent more time there are many things that have brought us closer and every one of them can only enjoy their confidence about me is based on their knowledge please listen the foundation for your confidence in the kingdom is not just bold face for nothing it is the knowledge of god the bible says it says let not the wise man glory in his wisdom let not um how did he put it now let not let not the strong man glory in his strength but it says let him that glory at glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me the foundation as i'm saying it now please i want you to check your life there are many hustlers in life they like money but they hate god they like what God can give, but they hate him. They like church. They love miracles. They love anointing. They love signs and wonders, but they hate God. They like seed sowing and harvest, but they hate God. Please come, Pastor Alpha. Let me tell you something. I can come to your house and like your bed. Your bed is not you. Correct? I can like your kitchen. I can like your food. I can like your suit. I can like your tie. Huh? I can like your children. I can like your car. All those things are related to you, but they are not you. Anointing is not God. Miracles is not God. Hear me, oh. Breakthrough is not God. Fasting is not God. Prayer is not God. Bible study is not God. God is a person who can be known. You can hang around activities that are related to him and convince yourself that because you have actively participated in activities that relate to God, it means you know him. This is the pride of African men. We claim I was born in so, so, so time. This baptistry, we were the ones who dedicated it. The first communicants, we are the ones who laid hands on them. When Reinhard Bonke came, we were the ones who set the canopy. And we add all those spiritual accolades to equal knowing God. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Knowing the things of God and knowing God are two different things. The Bible never said, but the people who come to church. It never said, but the people who drop their tithes and offerings. He never said the people who are ordained into ministry. Please listen carefully. We are examining the foundation for our results. You learn principles without an encounter with God. You are just learning jargons. As powerful as principles are. Principles are a derivative of a relationship with a person. Are we together now? Yes. You can know about me by reading my books, but you know me by meeting me. My book is supposed to create an appetite for encounter. Here's what the Bible says. It says, ye search the scriptures. You search the scriptures because you think in them by themselves you will find life. He said, those scriptures testify of me. That means reading the Bible should stimulate you to want to meet a person. Much more than opening the Bible. Zodiac books can be opened and you can read. Scientology and all kinds of books can be opened. But if you're reading the book, does not translate to meeting a person, you will never be great in life. But the people that do know their God, show me a man who is willing to go through the price of intimacy. I don't care whether he went to school or not. I don't care whether he came from what background. Show me a man. He may be an orphan. Oh, goodness. 
what relationship with the Holy Spirit can bring to a man. Brothers and sisters, he can pick a weak person, a weak person, a weak lady, no father, no mother, no opportunity for a great life, but that you are stupid enough to say, Spirit of the living God, you represent the presence of Jesus. I am willing. I am willing. Like a little child will run to the father. I'm clueless about my life and destiny. I don't know where I'm coming from. I don't know where I'm going to. I don't have an idea of what life is about. But all I want is you. I want to know you. I want to see your face. I want to know you, Lord. I want to touch you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you. Listen. Life will challenge your knowledge of God. You can know God as a theory. One day. The reason why many believers give up just like some of you now. Let me tell you the mystery of tiredness and living God is because there was no encounter in the first place let's be careful the kind of believers we are producing in church I know when I talk like this people think I'm just being sarcastic no I love the body of Christ but we need to re-examine the quality of the harvest we are bringing because we are bringing believers who don't know God they don't care about God they have zero passion for the things of God they will tell you i'm not called into ministry god has called me into business in other words keep all that one to the business people whoever told you knowing god was for pastors whoever told you knowing god was for men of god and their wives and their children but the people that do know their god you want a harvest of strength you want a life of exploits and triumph the first prize is to know God I can pray for you but I can't know God for you you can benefit from my relationship but brothers and sisters everybody will stand before that Red Sea whether you are married when you get to the Red Sea pastor you will stand there and your wife will stand before her Red Sea it is her faith that will bring her victory you can't intercede for people indefinitely forever no sir are we together but the people who do know their god i talk to pastors and they tell me apostle how do you manage criticism how you do you manage this you know people who like me don't no longer like me and i look at them i say oh dear you are just like a patient comes to tell the doctor and says look i've been purging i've been coughing and while he's talking the doctor is seeing symptoms of cholera are you seeing that now that's the same way do you know most of our lamentations are a window into something that is wrong most likely we don't know God most likely hmm. that's why you can say father I I thank you I know you will bless me but Lord if you don't bless me anything I do oh, that's your cup of tea that kind of talk is a revelation that there is no encounter because when you know God he infects you like a virus you come to a point where you say lord seeking you for results is over forever i seek you first for who you are results or no results i'm stuck with you i'm stuck with you it's a salt covenant i'm stuck with you forever are we together everybody say the price of intimacy say it say the price of intimacy can you boldly stand please i want you to listen to my message knowing god experientially it's a powerful message knowing god experientially teaches you the system of knowing god let me tell you how god causes men to know him he introduces himself to people and his dimensions in the presence of their challenges and predicaments only challenges can help men know god there's no other way to know him the names of god scattered in the bible were a revelation of him in the presence of certain challenges most people know god as healer 
just because they saw Benny him praying or they came for miracle service but the day you stand face to face with a doctor's report that says look madam um, I'm sorry to tell you this but it's not like you may not give birth you cannot give birth we have done the scan and we realize that you don't even have a womb he says sorry come again he say look I'm a consultant so you are not talking to a stupid person there is no womb at that point you go back and say God is this not your word let me tell you what it will do to you challenges shake us up all of a sudden and make God serious you know that there is a way you can be trivializing God but then certain challenges just shake you ordinarily you will not wake up by 2 a.m. in the night but the reality of what has confronted you forces you to wake up you don't need alarm clock you don't need Lipton you don't need coffee the pressure and all of a sudden you pray let me tell you something after nine months when you hold that child you are not holding a child you are holding a testimony other people are dancing over a child you are dancing over a testimony so the day they prophesy and say may the God that can open up a door in one year open your door other people are saying amen the moment let me tell you how you receive things in the spirit yes you receive by faith but your past experiences with God help you to receive the newer things he's bringing God looks for something he has done in your life before and connects it to what you are trusting him for are we together when David was fighting Goliath remember he drew from the archives of God's faithfulness do you have a name you have given God based on something only you and him know or are you just reciting the names that you read in the Bible Rapha Jire, pastor there is a name you call your wife it's none of my business it's none of our business that is a product of intimacy there is a name you call somebody when you are angry there is a name you call somebody when the times are good there is a even as friends is that true what is the name of god that is a product of your knowing him what name did you give him is there a secret name that every time you call god says i know this voice uh -uh. no one else calls me this name when pastor alpha's wife hears him calling that name he can't mistake it she can't mistake it for me even if i know the name it won't sound like that there is a mystery behind the name there is a way when people in the bible said rafa there were too many stories that came to their mind but today you say rafa and your mind is blank no experience to connect to rafa oh jehovah jireh as abraham abraham knows jehovah jireh but we sing it jehovah jireh my provider and we jump around and there is no revelation that connects that that's why africa has resorted to calling him names in their languages because they found out that it, it has it can help when that gentleman was calling whatever he was saying i was happy because he was not just reciting a poem a name that relates to your pain you don't survive an accident and call god jire you call him the deliverer the deliverer so when somebody sees you say how oh, the deliverer is here they say ah, in a prosperity convention say mr man is the dimension of god that was revealed to me that i keep calling what is the name what is the name we've had our fathers call god names that were strange to us we copied it but it's time for us to have a genuine encounter genuine encounter the price of intimacy koinonia please listen to me no level of business acumen no level of education can cover the gap that intimacy was meant to cover but the people that do know their god if you're a pastor please don't do ministry without knowing god you will die like a chicken you will sit down one day on the stage and start crying and the people ask you what is going you say i, I don't know The price of intimacy 
there are certain things about intimacy i want us to understand number one please i'm taking out time to just i want us to understand this thing intimacy takes time you cannot know a man a woman you are willing to spend time with no sir intimacy is a product of time you don't give god five minutes and get benny Hinn's encounter please god is not that cheap my brother my sister listen to me you need to spend time he must mean a lot to you number two god must become priority to have intimacy with him the bible says don't cast your pearl before swine i've said it you don't come to someone's house and then he takes you to his bedroom shows you where he keeps money no sir when you come sometimes you will even stand at the gate sometimes you will enter and stay inside sometimes you will stay at the parlor you will not even have access to the kitchen but there are certain people while all that is happening the child can run and even enter the bedroom the price for intimacy i look at the lives of people believers yes we are born again yes we are filled with the holy spirit but when i look at our lives i don't see priority passion for god is contagious when a brother likes a lady no matter how he tries to hide it his roommate will know is that true the roommate will say you just spoke to five people but this sixth person the joy at which you used to call that lady this joy is not natural correct you are hugging everybody after service and then the way you hug that lady brother said this hug is too generous for just brotherly kindness no what is there's more to this i say it's true i've been looking at her passion passion has a presence don't lie to us that you love god when we cannot see the passion passion has a presence I hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land. All I want is you. I hunger and thirst for you. I hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land. For all I want. The third key I'm sharing with you for intimacy to be established one is you must be ready to invest your time you give God five minutes of your time you get five minutes worth of knowledge second is priority third is your willingness to lay down ha. The, the Bible calls it the power to lay down this is where some of you will not like me now this is where many believers will not like me now because our generation has been indoctrinated that you can eat your cake and have it no sir go and ask anybody even an occultist you don't eat your cake and have it you cannot know god without a sacrifice i'm not talking money a sacrifice fasting is a sacrifice prayer is a sacrifice are we together studying the bible is a sacrifice we don't like this language at all yet we want power we want results sacrifice there are times that on account of your intimacy with god you just want to eat and the word of the lord comes to you go on a three-day fast oh god which breakthrough is coming now god said this is not the issue of breakthrough you are about i'm about to reveal i'm about to open you up to certain encounters and i said god this is not flamboyant enough if that you told me that i after these three days fast land will manifest from anywhere and come it's a worthy investment to fast but wh why will i fast to know you what is the big deal about you when i'm looking for land and god will say you see it you see your heart Pastor Alpha, hold my hands again. Everybody says sacrifice. 
I am amazed at the difficulty that believers go through to lay down the slightest thing. Slightest thing. So this suit, you discuss with God for one year before it leaves. You are carnal and you don't love him. It's the truth. Empty your account. I curse that, that devil. You argue for two years first and finish the money till 10,000. I say, God, I will lay it down. God says, just leave. I will tell you when to do it again. Are you willing to lay down? Jesus said, I have the power to lay down. Let me show you maturity in the spirit. When a man has gotten to a point where there is nothing you cannot lay down. Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest. Many of us will agree to fast for 400 days than to lay down something for him. Everybody says sacrifice. 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 When God makes that demand and you are willing to sacrifice, you will know him. Let me tell you, I submit to you with all humility. This man standing before you is a testimony of sacrifice. Ask God, there is nothing I cannot lay down for him. Oh, it's a joke. Before he finishes talking, it will go. I have exercised myself to see the vanity of anything outside of God. You must lay down. The Bible says, love not the world. Usually, it's those who hate money that preach that message. No. It's all those who are poor and broke. They preach it as a consolation to their poverty. No, sir. You should not preach that message until you are really rich. Love not the world or the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, he didn't say don't have those things. An affinity to it. God gave you a car and the car took his place. God gave you a wife and the wife took his place. God gave you children. They took his place. God gave you a, a job paying six figures. And he lost you in that job. Is God speaking to someone here? God increased your CGPA. And that's the end of it. God connected you to a good brother, a good sister. God gave you a business idea. And with that idea, he lost you. No, sir. No, sir. Sacrifice. The Lord, for as long as I live, in life and in death, you remain my priority. And that if need be, I will lay aside anything. If God tells me lay aside koinonia now, brothers and sisters, is with tears we we'll hold the last valedictory service. I will hold the last service. I don't care what prophet comes from where and says, Apostle, I think you are not hearing God well. I will apologize when God changes his mind, but for now, koinonia closed. Apostle, what do you do with the life you are blessing? I don't know. Ask the one who sent me, but koinonia closed. There is a way you can do ministry. You have carried your reputation and your life and added to it. When God says shift left, God says, and then leave me where? Are we together? I want you to look at your life now. Let me show you why money is not coming to your life. Leave, leave business. We are coming there. But we are examining why there are some of us, regardless of our prayer, Satan enters our life anyhow. Do you know why? because the lust in your heart needs to be purged beyond imagination your attachment to things you god would dare not make a demand of anything what sort of thing is that who gave you the life many of you would have noticed that from august august till now i'm not sure i've gone from over four ministrations cancelled almost everything it's just been maybe one or two ministrations per month and the rest. Very unusual because that's the instruction God gave. And I said, that's it. Let me tell you, there are certain people that I would have wanted to be in their meetings with all my heart. But I love God. There's nothing I know that moves the heart of God than him seeing something you ordinarily love. But you say, Lord, it is for you. He says, that's it. This is what I'm looking for. If this handkerchief is five naira and i tell you i brought this handkerchief from the uk are we together i bought it 
whatever amount, one pound, and I carried it from the UK, and I brought. They wanted to collect it, but I hid it back. Immigration wanted to harass me, but I said, this is for you. If I give you, will you give somebody for 1,000? It's not about the sacrifice have increased the value of it. There is no rising in the spirit when you are holding on to everything. Jealousy, anger, huh? all kinds of things. Please, let's re-examine these things. If we really want results, God declared that it's a year of triumph, but it's your heart with him. It's your heart with him. Apostle, all I want is just pray for me. Let a husband come. Keep quiet, oh sister, and listen to what I'm telling you because it's not just the issue of pray for husband god has already seen the wickedness in your heart and god is saying no way you must love me first before i carry my son that i've labored on to carry and give you oh god just bless me i need to be a millionaire i've seen this thing in my dream and god said if you don't listen to my servant you will it will remain in the dream there it takes hunger for god how many people have made money and left God. Have you seen people like that? Anybody that says money does not give you an option is a poor and a broke person who doesn't know anything about money. Because when you have money, there are few things you will pray about. Correct? Many prayer requests are tied to finances. And let me be honest with you, there is a level in your life that you get to where you don't think about money again. You may not have everything. But you get to a point where all your basic needs can be met to the degree you want them to be met. At that point, that's how you see how carnal and mundane your heart is. Because there's nothing else. I understand praying for six hours because of the emergency that is on you. But when His Majesty has lifted your life beyond certain realms, that's when you will know and prove whether He's really Lord in your life. My number one prayer to God every time is so God for as long as I live may nothing win my heart so much enough to be able to push you and say God wait behind just because a door of ministry was open wait behind oh God Benny Hinn is calling me wait behind Billy Graham gave me the privilege to see him before he dies wait behind Bill Gates just called me and he said he wants to bless a man of God on earth and favor located me. No, sir. No, sir. Lord, make me your priority. Make me your priority. Make me your priority. This was the secret of David. Make me your priority. Priority means you mean the world to me. You mean the world to me. Brothers and sisters, get my passion for God. I pray that God will, will, whatever it is that God did to me, I pray that it will happen to you. Because if truly speaking, you want to do business with God, you must love him beyond things. Things. Beyond things. Beyond things. I love him with all my heart. I love him. My heart is open before him. He's the God of my salvation. I love him with all my heart. I will lay down anything for him. Anything. Anything. I really mean it. I really mean it. Don't think I'm just talking. I fear God. I will lay down anything. Reputation, nonsense. If you can lay down anything in his presence and go down on your knees, and say lord this is for you i lay down my pride i lay down my achievement oh i have a phd in so 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 and so just calm down first too. lord i hand it over to you there's nothing god loves like surrender 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 it's yours that's a language that is music to his ears the anointing lord you gave me is yours the grace you gave me is yours and while people are clapping for you in the open apostle joshua selman you come before him and say lord without you i can go nowhere say, apostle tell the truth as anointed as you are without you hmm. the wife of david looked at him 
and said you are dancing you are you are you are misrepresenting yourself you don't know you are a king before god and david said me you don't know my track record with this god i've told god one day to me leaving you please if it means me taking my life let it be that i didn't finish my assignment but that you remain my priority I surrender all. everything I give to you. I'm withholding nothing. Listen to the song before you sing it. Lord, I surrender. All. To you, everything I give to you, I'm withholding nothing. Withholding Listen, nothing. the key to dying, killing your reputation, and the, the key to entering your rest is to hand over your life to God. I don't have any reputation, no brothers and sisters. My reputation is God. You know, there are times that sometimes I chat with the media people and they tell me, you know, someone, all these people that write all kinds of things, sometimes they send mails, sometimes sarcasm, people say all kinds of things. I say, Apostle, your reputation, and I laugh. I say, ah, reputation died since when? If I had a reputation of my own, wouldn't I be under pressure right now? Let me tell you what is causing stress. The fight to protect our reputation. That's it. So that people will not think I'm poor. Let me prove a point. And God is saying, what point? Come on to me. Come on to me. I need people to know that me, I'm, not, I'm not just a, I'm not, I'm not a poor man. I, I need to go and buy a trouser. And God says, no, I am your reputation. I am your inheritance. Listen, let me teach you people the secret of rest. There are many pastors wearing themselves out. I need crowd so that they will know that me too am anointed. If, if a man can receive nothing except it is given to him from God. I learned to rest in him. He truly is my rest. <laughs> it's my rest. That's why the ministry has been designed in such a way that whether I'm here or not, God will be glorified. It can't be around me. No, sir. If I die now, God forbid, ah yes, you will just cry for seven days. You will try to pray and raise me back to life maybe two or three days. After three days, I guarantee you'll be tired small. And you just say, Tom, what do we do? They say, let's just give God praise. Somebody will have a dream and see me saying, please bury me, Jerry, and leave me in peace. Ah, but he said you will not die. While you are talking all that nonsense, I'm in heaven. Happy and rejoicing and looking at you and saying, instead of crying for me, you better go and listen to my messages and make a meaning out of your life for for me to live is christ but to die is gain look at the stress that is killing you is it not because of ego talk to me 90 percent of the depression that is killing us in this life is an attempt to protect our image we say and i need to guard my image. what nonsense image Ask a man who built an image that God smashed into pieces. He built 90 feet of his image protected by bowing down. God says no. But those who entered the fire to protect the image of God, God says I come to protect you. Brothers and sisters, I give you an advice. Carry your reputation like a sacrifice. Hand it over to God and enter your rest this night. This is a deliverance for someone now. Is that true? The 40,000 house rent is killing you. You don't have the money. But to go and meet your friend and squat, you are saying, no, I need them to know. Please, enter your rest. Pack out of that place and go and give yourself peace. Instead of dying to maintain your reputation. They've been seeing me wearing only one shoe. I need to get another one. Nobody has been seeing you. People have their problems. It is your, it is your, your, the punishment that comes from not handing over everything to God.
I'd like you to pray as you are seated and say, Lord, I am tired of carrying a load you told me to give you. I hand it over. Apostle, but people are always asking me, when will I marry? It will kill you. Don't let depression kill you. Hand everything over to God and enter your Sabbath. Enter your rest. A man can receive nothing until it is given to him from God. Pray, Lord, make me your priority. I'm willing to commit time to knowing you. I'm willing to commit to surrender everything and make you a priority. This obsession I have for marriage, this obsession for children, this obsession for job, this obsession for power, this obsession for ministry and rema and miracles is taking your place. Return back to your throne, oh God. If this is all I share tonight, it's worth it. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be? That's my testimony. If you left you waited, you waited. Listen, where would I be if he left me? This song means a lot to me because you see, brothers and sisters, he is the invisible force behind men who command results. You don't see him, you only see them. So chances are that they are the ones who you can shake. They are the ones who you can sow to. But every great man knows that behind him is an invisible and mighty God. Unmovable. I may shake, but he's unmovable, unshakable. But the people that do know their God shall defy status quo. They shall be strong and they shall do exploits the first prize we are revisiting the mysteries that make for greatness brothers and sisters let's return to the place of intimacy let's return to the place of intimacy this is a call return to the place of intimacy spend time with god draw strength from him talk to him don't hide anything from him open your all to him it will be foolish and silly to hide anything from him everything carry your pain carry your tears learn to spend time with god alone hold on please there are some of you as i look at you you don't yet have the passion for god to go on a personal retreat no you are churchy you love god you don't drink you don't steal you don't womanize you don't follow men but you don't love god you can't go by yourself and lock your house and say please i need to spend time some of you the last time you did this was a long time ago ministry are it is place in your life listen you must learn the power of retreating even if it's just for a day do it lock yourself lord i come before you you are the god of my strength i am open and naked before you these are my crowns these are my pains I bring them before you and you fellowship with him and he talks to you ah my son I love you correct this add this to your life I'm introducing this begin to see things this way and you come out of there with fire and grace and people look at you and your life is an unending compendium of wonder wonder unfolding when a man gasses out it's a sign that he has left the secret place in a long time. Freshness is one of the characteristics of the secret place.
Look at me. Whether you are working class or you are a student, you are a father, you are a mother, you are a husband or a wife, I'd like you to write it if you are writing. I must create time alone, underline alone with God. MOG, create time more with God because all you have to serve the people is what you receive in the secret. Thank you, Jesus. That's how it works. You want to experience a, a life of unending victory. It starts that way. It starts that way. It always starts with him. Not principles. We are coming to principles. But him. Not just an encounter. An encounter can be a one-time experience. But intimacy is fellowship. Is partnership. Staying remaining with him where he becomes your priority sister a brother comes into your life and meets you madly in love with god he won't do any how to you like that because he met when he meets you idol uh, idol carelessly moving around waiting for a man that's when he does everything for you he comes to find you in worship can we see by this time oh i would love to but i, I need to spend some time with god ah, which god so, well that's that's what i do i buy yourself you are behaving as if you're a child and you, you just see that as a sign from god that this is going to be a wicked husband you don't need to go and ask god again whether he's the will of god god answered you there your passion forced an answer from him are we together i love god i love jesus i love him I like you to pray and say, Lord, help me love you. Help me love you genuinely. The price of intimacy. Sabra gada kosi keti yalakata. Brendis kalepra hasuzi amana kalatusi. The price of intimacy. The price of intimacy. Let no westernization preach you out of this, my brother, my sister the price of intimacy let education not preach you out of this let a job let money let marriage let children not preach you out of this way before ministry was he was and he is and will ever be in the beginning god in the beginning god in the beginning god I must become alpha and no man of your life for anything in between to make sense. Please pray. Oh, I re I reestablish my covenant of intimacy. For Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Yes, you are the cup that will run dry. Other things may run dry. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Not in my life. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Hold on. It's impossible to marry a bad woman when your heart is connected to God, you attract what looks like you. You leave God and you are doing all kinds of rubbish. The devil will bring Jezebel to your life that will tear your head and tear your anointing into pieces. It's impossible to marry a bad man. All these men that drive you to church, they leave you somewhere. Sisters, I'm talking to you. They all go and do koinonia. Pray for us, oh Mother Teresa. As soon as they are rounding up, they are there by that place where they are selling something. They are waiting for you. They pick you and say, I love you. Nonsense. Let me deliver you now. If there are such kind of people in your life, you better send them a text and tell them, get out of my life so that God himself will bring my husband or my wife. Hallelujah. Anybody that hates your God and likes you is a liar. No, sir. You come under my roof, you serve what I'm serving. You serve who I'm serving. You can't be under my roof and have your own rules. No, sir. It's 
it is from your intimacy you will raise your children you can't give what you don't have it is from your intimacy as a pastor let me tell you when you love god and you hunger after him that fire con the people catch that fire and they love god too you tell people to fast you are eating secretly you buy fish you buy yam you buy whatever people are laboring and they are fasting you will eat and belt and dress and come and round up the meeting intimacy intimacy i'd like you to think in one minute what is that one thing that is currently fighting the position of god in my life think don't pray think what is it what is that one thing that if god makes a demand now honestly i can't give it what is it some of us is our reputation i keep talking about this reputation my class I am this, I am that, the power of my hand. Hey. I have seen mighty people fall like a leaf overnight because God, they ignored God's assistance in their life. You can be a CEO of XYZ today and be a billionaire and crash back to zero. Is God waking somebody up today? Please return to the secret place. Return to the place where he is priority. Return to the age long and age old mystery of retreats. Where you take periodic times out with God. And just spend and cry before him. And say Lord thank you. That you fast for 100 days does not mean you love God. It can just mean that you are a strong person. Congratulations for that. But it's not equal to intimacy. You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. You're all to hold the hand of your neighbor and pray for him and say lord keep your love burning in him keep your love burning in her don't pray for yourself pray for your neighbor lord keep your love burning that's the investment of prayer i'm making for my neighbor whether you're a newcomer or not lord keep your let my neighbor prioritize you my neighbor loves you but you are not such a big deal to him or to her but lord walk on his heart tonight walk on her heart tonight hallelujah hallelujah are you blessed are you blessed these are the mysteries let me teach you one more hmm. the second prize that i want to teach you tonight wherever we stop we'll pray we'll continue next week i'm taking this thing because i really want us to understand the second prize is the price of submission to authority listen the price of submission to authority write it down mm. the price the embarrassing ego stinging but destiny molding price of submission to authority the mysteries that turn people's lives into wonders the price of submission to authority hmm. nobody promotes himself in this kingdom you cannot promote yourself you cannot accredit yourself nobody makes himself a professor 
nobody makes himself a doctor is that true pastor alpha you have supervisors correct mm -hmm. no student marks his project and say i passed correct no in the kingdom listen the system of rising is such that it's not only god that approves you alone men must approve you if not you would never rise listen to me your approval is not just in the hands of god alone it's in the hands of men too mm. jesus knew this that's why he had to look for john the baptist what will the son of god be doing the son of god look for john the baptist for what for what the word that created the heavens and the earth searches for john the baptist when john sees him says he says behold the lamb that's enough to make his head big and say oh so you know then it means i will go back he said no suffer it to be so it's an ordinance it's a secret permit it to be so i know that i created you but suffer it to be so that all scriptures will be fulfilled that there be no legal basis for my remaining small listen i know that god has approved you but have men approved you you will think it does not matter go and find out those who made kings in the bible whether the spirit appeared as a ghost god chose them men anointed them kings is it in your bible how god anointed jesus but did, did it come like that no samuel how long will you weep over saul seeing that i rejected him go and take your horn i want to use david but you have refused to cooperate with me i have approved him from heaven but david cannot rise because the man that will pour the oil and approve him refused God approves a man as a king and on earth the authority to accredit him is still negotiating and because of that that person remains grounded listen Saul the son of Kish was looking for his father's donkey when he met an authority that could approve and he called him he said come go up I will tell you what is in your heart and all of a sudden he anointed Saul and poured oil on him and his life changed whoever lied to you that when you say to hell with men you will prosper the Bible says believe in the Lord your God you want to be established wonderful but if you want to make it in this life brothers and sisters you must submit to God's scriptural pattern of authority your alignment to God's scriptural chain of authority decide how and what flows to you your alignment to god's scriptural chain of authority determines how and what flows to you there are prophets in the bible who were preordained by god to be prophets there were other prophets who were made prophets nowhere in the bible it was never written that they should be prophets amos was not a prophet he was a farmer he was an agriculturist but a man saw him and made him a prophet elisha was not a prophet oh i hope you know that when elijah took his girdle and slapped it on elisha while he was farming elisha started following him the result was that he became a prophet. Agabus, a man in the Bible called Agabus, who gave birth to daughters. The Bible never tells us that they were serious spiritually. But because they were born, they came out of a loin, the loins of a man who for whatever reason was a prophet. The old daughters were prophets too. your submission to authority is a mystery that governs promotion ask anybody who is honest enough to admit 
and tell them the day they began to discern authority what happened in their lives that's why you see those who dishonor the body of Christ will never rise you've heard me say this all those who make it a point of duty they insult every man of God they insult every church once it's not your pastor everybody is an object of there is a sin that you can do against the body of Christ a man cannot just sin against God alone you can sin against the body of Christ and the Bible says jealousy is the rage of a man I cannot come and insult a Jimmy's wife and expect him to smile no. the first understanding of authority is your submission to the body not just to man of God not just to spiritual fatherhood your submission to the body the multifaceted dimension of God that is scattered in the body your ability to acknowledge that the body of Christ is a compendium of infinite possibilities regardless of what your unique biases are when you love the body you are ready to access the deep things in the spirit God will never do business with you when you hate his body there are people who are fasting giants but their cynicism against the body mention any name of any man of God they have something to say mention it, they, that attitude of sarcasm and they wonder why regardless of fasting and prayer nothing comes the body the Bible says for this cause not discerning the body many are weak for this cause many are sick this cause many do sleep as a ministry we have clearly defined our position over the body i love the body of christ you will never hear me open my mouth and talk about any man of god and any ministry it doesn't mean i believe everything i have my reservations but i love the body a wounded bride is still a bride if a woman injures her hand on her wedding day, does it stop her from marrying? That woman you insult every time, call the church, is someone's wife. Submission to the body. Submission to the body. That you discern that this body of Christ is a compendium of possibilities. The blessing of God always comes to you through alignment to authority. The blessing of God, please everyone listen. The blessing of God will always come to your life through alignment. Write this down. I learned this from Dr. Mike Mudok. The primary purpose of authority is provision, protection, and promotion. Write it down. The primary purpose of authority, the primary purpose of authority is provision, protection, and promotion. Provision. When you submit to authority, you have access to the promotion that that authority commands. When you submit to authority, you have access to the protection. We call it a covering. And when you submit to authority, you have access to promotion. Are we blessed? You can never promote yourself. You can never accredit yourself. Listen, when you see people submit to authority, let me tell you why people hate submission. Come, Pastor Alpha. There are many people, what they are doing is pseudo submission. You know what we call pseudo submission? One leg in, one leg out. You are not exactly there, but you are just there. Who is this guy? Well, he's a very, he's a senior colleague. He's just a brother there. You, are, you, are, you will never rise that way. No way. God is not a fraudster. You are in it or you are out. I will never forget a gentleman who walked up to me one day and said, Sir, I've been looking at you as if he's toasting me. I've been watching you. I've been watching your life, sir. And, uh, you know, I just feel I need to come close to you. I told this, get out of here. Don't, don't waste my time. 
go and walk on your pride in the secret place when your discernment is complete and you understand that not all human beings are pure human beings then when you submit to a man you don't submit to a body you submit to a system are we together if you fly a plane somebody drives it even if it is your jet somebody drives it the jet is guaranteed to carry you but not all, everybody will be a driver that's how it is in life listen no matter how you fear god and no matter how you love god there are things that you will get based on connection you will pray in the secret place god will refer you to his structure the Bible says the church was built in a very strange way. It says Christ being the chief cornerstone. After that, he said it was on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Not just by name. Then the body was built. There are certain graces when you don't encounter in your life, you will never rise. I know this looks like human worship. But these are the secrets that other people who are not very smart, they just know how to encounter it. The body of Christ. Do you have that discernment? I've shared with you how we received the grace for long life. We transported the grace of for long life officially and brought it to this ministry. Yeah, I know how we got it. When we stopped at that place, that border between Quara State and Ekiti State, there is a strange mystery that goes on there. 142 132 125 healthy ah we stopped quickly we went to the baba there we said sir there is a grace for long life here we wanted the man laughed he said kneel down he didn't say are you a pastor because when you go as a pastor you stay outside when you submission demands a stripping of whatever robe or regalia and a an acknowledgement that's what we did on a very good day he says sir i'm just returning from a ministry where there are miracles baba do you know me cannot even speak english we got we had to look for an interpreter and he spoke kneel down jerry young people we knelt down and this man began to speak i told you i met the wife of the 132 year old man who died i think she was like maybe 120 something you would think she's 60 and I told her, I said, ah, when the woman saw, she tapped me. She said, follow me. I didn't care where I was going. No, no matter what I saw, I would stay there. Because I know what brought me there. If I was cynical, I said, madam, where are you taking me? I'm a born again believer. No, go there first. She showed me the picture of her youth with the one 32 year old man. Afterwards, we told her that they prayed for us. But since you are the wife, two have become one. The man is dead, you are alive, so he's still alive. And the woman removed her shoes. Said, kneel down. Ah, what do you think I'll do? Hey. Submission. Submission. Let me tell you what many of us will do. <laughs> Mama, just pray. Is that kneeling down? That's pride. You are not receiving a sword. Kneel down. One of the biggest enemy of submission is that we think submission is a way of demeaning our own self. Now, truly speaking, do you know there are people who do that? They purposely demean you in the name of submission. That's wrong. There are insecure men and women of God scouting around for anybody they can call son or daughter to increase their accolades not because they understand what they have and they will purposely humiliate you especially in the open to show look Jesus was with the people who were submissive to him but you did not even know who Jesus was they had to use a kiss to identify him I choose to be like him you don't have to move around and when people are there you say oh yeah pastor Alpha, shift let them know I'm the one <laughs> when they know you can come back I watch people who hate submission having passion for sons and daughters they hate submission they hate acknowledging authorities 
they come for a meeting and see a, a man of God that deserves honor, uh, all protocols duly observed. Ah, uh, Pastor Femi, aye. Is that greeting? That is, that, is, that is the attitude of pride that drives grace down. Look, if you are anointed, you are anointed. It's as simple as that. If it's not there, it's not there. Are we together? Authority. I can share with you encounters after encounters. One of the things I love about the leaders and the people in this ministry, and that's why you see that many of them have been able to reproduce this grace, is because they understand submission. Truly speaking, I tell you, I am very proud of the workers in this ministry. I am proud of the heads of department. They understand submission. Submission is not a way of managing a man of God's insecurity. Listen, never form a team where the loyalty of the people is questionable. Let me give you an advice. If I want to create, come, 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 darling. If I want to establish a company, come. One, two, three, four. If I notice your loyalty is questionable, I will sack you. Go out. Go away. Oh, but you are, you are gifted. Just carry your gift and go away with it. You only deal ruthlessly with rebellion. Listen, I'm telling you. People will interpret it as insecurity. But it is irresponsible for a leader to see rebellion and let it go. Deal with it. Are we together? Yes. I will not let anybody to be close to me who does not listen to me and acknowledge the authority of the Lord of, of, on my life over him. I will not. I don't hate you. I won't fight you. But you certainly will not be close to me. You know why? Because you will not receive and you will corrupt the passion of others from coming to receive because they will say you are close why are you not getting this result i says yeah this thing is it not we that are close to them we 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 that are if me i'm close like this have you ever seen me heal the sick so you should be doubting and i say ah you mean it that anointing is for i didn't say he's fake oh i only said am i not close to him why has it not come on me take those kind of people out of your life i'm i'm talking to you sincerely take them out of your life anybody that comes close to you as I, I don't mean everybody but as somebody a man of God or somebody that God has lifted to a measure not all of them will submit to you in terms of fatherhood but they should be able to acknowledge what God is doing in your life enough to listen when there is time to listen are we together now you are worship team here and your music director is talking to you and say sir like i read in the book mm -mm, keep quiet you do it again you do it tomorrow if i'm you he will never sing here again no way it's more than holding the mic and a good voice you don't listen that's how one day they'll say sing after two times transpose and you invent your own everybody transposes only you and you are just dancing because people are clapping you are dancing and you mess up Team spirit only happens when there is an agreement to submit. Are you listening to what I'm saying? That's why many people never rise. All blessings come. They flow from a scriptural chain of authority. A few weeks ago, Pastor Alpha went to stand in for me for a meeting and a number of our people. And after the meeting, one of the mothers there sent me a text. And say apostle you have reproduced yourself verbatim in these people and i smiled i said they deserve it they deserve it one of our dear ones here when he was in the school of ministry you know this was somebody that god helped and one time he went towards their graduation time he went to minister somewhere and my goodness it was an experience there was such an avalanche of the presence and the power of god and he returned back he was saying ah this and that and that and i told him when you listen and you submit you have it everybody say submission to authority learn it today learn it we have to stop here but if just doing these two things alone the the bible says god called abraham he says a lot went with him is that in your bible lot did what 
He didn't say Abraham said, Lord, let's go. Lord said, I'm going. I'm sure Abraham said, you better go back. And Lord went with him. God called Elijah and Elisha went with him. Elisha had sons of the prophets who paid school fees. And they were receiving lectures from a lecturer. But Elisha said, since I didn't pay anything, I will humble myself and follow. He was the one who poured water on the hands of Elisha. I'm not saying to compel people to worship you. Please don't do that. I, I know that the leaders in this ministry will not do that. Don't just make... There are times that people do some unnecessary worship. You know you have not gotten to the level that demands that. You stop it consciously. Even as I am now. There are things... There are some mothers old enough to be my mother old enough more older than my mother they will see me and they want to kneel down i will be stupid at my age and level to allow a woman kneel down like that and say she acknowledges me no if i try to carry her up and she refuses i kneel down with her too that's a wise person so fatherhood is not a way of massaging your ego to watch people worship you while they do it you make sure the crowd is watching no god will punish you for playing with people's lives like that but brothers and sisters there are mysterious benefits to submission one of it is the flow of grace one of it is the flow of grace believe this oh believe this pastor jimmy was telling me yesterday that he was talking with someone a meeting that i'm going for next year somewhere and then he was talking with the person the person had had me mention his name and he you know they got in touch and he was saying sir i've had apostle talk about you so so much and i was so touched yesterday he's just hearing it now Ejimi was talking to me and he said that he told the man he said sir your life and your ministry is about to shift in a way that you will never imagine when he said it i looked at him i said this is somebody who is my friend he's so close to me but that ability to discern some of you you know why god never lets you come close to a man of god your proximity for familiarity your your propensity for familiarity is too bad are we together someone came one day to see me and when he came he saw me eating corn and he was laughing he needed a some and he saw me i was eating corn and he was talking he said yeah he should allow me eat before i pray for him I said, don't be foolish. Didn't you come for prayer? Does eating the corn, does anointing flow through corn or through whatever? If, if you are coming to listen, keep quiet and listen. Otherwise, please walk out of here. You can be sleeping on the same bed with your miracle and lack of submission. There is no woman here who should refuse submitting to her husband any woman that refuses submitting to her husband i don't care whether the husband is a man of god or not listen ladies if you are about to get married make sure you are willing to submit to your husband i am not a i am i will not advocate oppressing women i don't do that but all this women alive movement and all this gender equality thing there is a balance to gender equality i don't oppress ladies I have a great deal of honor and respect for ladies but all this nonsense of what a man can do a woman can do also is is deception no i don't look down on women but the correct position of a woman's victory is under authority please learn this rebellious noisy mouth ladies that cannot submit to authority have signed for a life of defeat and pain listen it's true submission to authority that was the problem with Jezebel. It was obvious I have submitted to her and not the other way around. Because it was her that was running the nation. When Eve violated the law of submission, there was access to the serpent. God causes you to submit to protect you. I look at people who are in this ministry, but they are not really connected genuinely. Because I do not see the grace finding expression in their lives. There are people who have never come here. It's not about coming to lie down the altar necessarily. It's not even about sowing into the life of a man of God, carrying his handkerchief, carrying... Some of those things sometimes can just be ritualistic, really. But the truth of it is a connection. Connection is based... The Bible says as 
as um, face answers to face there is a connection genuine connection genuine honor whether in the secret or in the open you will never sometimes before hands are ever laid on you you will walk in that grace and reproduce it verbatim why have you not entered certain breakthroughs that you see it is because submission is not genuine submission is not genuine praise the lord first fatherhood but then second a recognition of people that have gone ahead of you you notice sometimes when i'm counseling people when someone comes is talking about issue finance or breakthrough or this i say please go to a jimmy sometimes they can see a jimmy laughing there and they just go and stand this guy and i say you remain poor and broke there because you are not willing to listen this guy you see carries a strange grace for wealth and abundance i've worked with Jimmy for years that grace on him came from his late mother yes my first genuine watch genuine watch not all those things genuine watch then the mom gave me from uk that watch never spoiled i sold it painfully nobody invents mantles they are transferred so if you ever see it on someone it left somewhere to come there don't trivialize it the men may be young but the mantles are ancient it's like water please help it's like water do you know the water on earth is older than everybody it keeps recycling that means somebody drank it abraham drank the water you are drinking isaac because it only recycles the crops can come out the corn i'm eating abraham they eat it but the water in the sea oh no come on that's how mantles are this healing grace nobody invents it nobody even if you receive directly from god to you it was an encounter but when god shows you the dynamics it was a connection i've taught you on systems nobody will ever walk on pros in prosperity insulting kenneth copeland start from anywhere in the world the mantles keep connecting themselves until it gets to the final person kenneth copeland is not carrying a mantle of he is the system on earth to the body that represents that possibility you want to walk in the anointing and in the healing ministry start from any man of god you keep connecting until it gets to benihin now currently you see that you don't invent a road that has been found there are people who are millionaires today they are not smart 90 percent of what we teach in business schools they don't know anything about it but they were just stupid enough to discern there is an ancient mystery i've shared with you my story remember the two women Ejimi, that i bought sugar cane for two women that were wearing tattered dresses i bought paid sugar cane for them a woman that cannot afford 50 naira now blesses me and says, my son forever walk upon gold that's what the woman told me forever walk upon gold I believe I received a strange I don't believe that woman was a pure human being I believe they were angels in disguise I don't believe that woman was a pure human being I have had many encounters like that but this one was strange <sighs> my life opened overnight the race is not to the swift I'm showing you how these systems work in the kingdom I've shared with you how I went to Canaan land to go and sow a seed to Bishop David Oedipo. When I finished all of that, I came out. When I came out, please help this lady. I came out. I, would, I had already been working in signs and wonders. Boarded flight by myself to go and sow a seed to a man of God. Most of you do it, but it's not genuine. You just do it for the sake of it. Listen more greatness produced from alignment that it will be done from knowledge 
more greatness will come from alignment in the days to come than it will come from knowledge i will teach you about knowledge i teach you about skill but brothers and sisters there are ancient dimensions that are not subject to just knowledge you can enter a reality before your mind catches up i remember when people i didn't used to work very strongly in the prophetic you no know, here and there god will help me but it wasn't anything serious i remember when I was browsing William Branham, people were lambasting that guy, saying nobody's carrying his anointing, nobody's carrying all these insults, they insult men of God. Be careful. I remember watching his video one night, early in the morning, and I just sat down. Tears were rolling down my eyes. I saw the humility and the compassion from that man. I said, how could people, this guy was a thousand times more humble than me and yet people keep talking about him and all of a sudden i felt it was like something on my head it took like 30 minutes it was coming down the next meeting i went to it was like a joke i started seeing names on people over people's head i said this is strange don't ignore submission you will pay for it i know you went to school but let me tell you there are people who read let me not call the name of any course had that class but were connected to an ancient mantle that can manipulate realities and today they are working in nmpc they've been working in nmpc for decades with a past degree they've been sacking anybody but the grace that brought there still keeps them you would think they've been sleeping around no sir listen before you submit to an authority, discern the graces at work. Discern the forces at work. Discern it. Don't just sit down and say, I am this, I am this. Whether you call, you say, Papa, you say whatever, you will never discern it. Discern it. How you know you are genuinely connected is that the results start reproducing in your life. Sometimes in a shocking way, let me tell you, if we send a dog from Koinonia, dog, D-O-G, I carry this handkerchief and tie it on that dog. I promise you and I send it for a crusade. People will rise up from wheelchairs and the sick. The power of God will flow. It's not about the dog. It's about what he's carrying. There are some things that are not just based on your personal work. Are you getting what I'm saying now? God said it's the year of triumph. He knows that there are many things you don't know. And if he's to wait just on some things that you need to know to prosper the natural way will take years before you really understand it. But there is a system. When he said it, there was already a provision. But you are refusing to tap into it because of pride. Pride. I see favor every day in my life every day is one thing I know if you ever are looking for the grace for favor and you have been looking around and you are not getting it you are a liar and you are calling God a liar and God will not be happy with you because that grace is more than available it's just that people don't know it There is nothing I'm wearing from my head to my toe that I bought with my money. No, plus my stockings, head to toe. Favor is real. You can sit and argue it in pride. Say it doesn't matter and sit down there. But you can believe and say, but Lord, this is possible. <sighs> Your life changes automatically. Do you believe this thing I'm sharing with you? I've taught you two things today the price to develop intimacy and the price of genuine connection genuine connection genuine connection you come for koinonia here you see manifestations of the spirit there are people like that they have reproduced it everywhere frankly speaking they can tell you i'm in a meeting say i didn't even pray honestly i just said father we give you thanks 
and people started for even then they will go back and say hey, but god thank you for covering for me it's alignment it's alignment when he dedicated the jerusalem temple he turned and said lord whoever faces here he didn't say if he prays well once he turns this direction and he aligns with this direction please hear them so when daniel was in trouble he couldn't depend on his personal work he opened the gates towards jerusalem and said this is a matter of life and death i can't afford to take risk and play with myself hallelujah it is the lord's doing then it is marvelous marvelous go to ida and you you go to you go to destiny makers international pastor alpha's ministry it's like koinonia reproduced verbatim now the shocking part how you know this is grace reproduced is that not all of them have come here let me tell you something about spirit transfer you don't have to learn it the anointing will make you do it are we together now the anointing will make you think in a certain way it will make you understand scripture in a certain way to produce certain outcomes it's a year of triumph because there is a possibility for a transfer there are some things you should never cry about in this ministry one of it is the presence of god one of it is the favor of god one of it is the gift of men one of it is the mantle for honor one of it is revelation and understanding one of it is prayer one of it is influence do you not see the graces flying around looking for those with discernment to receive the stranger comes visits koinonia once and carries that thing and goes back and their lives changed there are people listening to me right now from mubi it was i think it was yesterday i got the text when i went there just a few weeks ago i prophesied to them because their roads are bad and i told them i said in the name of jesus i attract the attention of the government here to fix this road just yesterday the governor was there and they commit you, you okay you were there when we got the text the governor came there commissioned the road see let me tell you this thing don't wait till your life gets too bad i know the dimension of the prophetic god gave me it's called the creative dimension of prophecy creation you make things happen you program them in the realm of the spirit you hear people come to testify here it's not just about speaking brothers and sisters don't delay your life by yourself our time is gone but we'll go pray for five minutes rise up everybody can we rise up and pray please rise up and pray. rise up we're going to pray prayer point number one father help me to be serious with you genuinely lift your voice and pray please pray Zabragata gato sata frediana malakato zapia. Sabraba sata balakoria sata balatus. Mambra gato sabratus keleba hosiana maladabash. Sabrakato sata bradeka teko lata brata sata balada hallelujah hallelujah prayer point number two i like you to pray genuinely and say lord in any way i have not aligned genuinely i align by faith i align by faith lift your voice and pray Rande sabaro koto shobra dis kalabos, zikete kosa tabaro to shobri anda kalabalarabos, shabra taka tabratis. Is how greatness happens in the kingdom, brothers and sisters. 
through authority, through alignment, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Hallelujah. I know that our time is gone. Please give me two minutes. Anything that is in your life that you did not see in this ministry, pray it out now and say you must go. Even if you are a visitor, lift your voice and pray. You must leave. You must leave. In the name of Jesus Christ, you must leave. By anointing of the Holy Spirit, you must leave. Are you praying? Sam Preketo Shala Branda Salabaturiata Sata Blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You now see the reason why when we welcome first timers, we call them out. We don't call them out just to clap for them. I know that many churches, they just identify them. Uh -uh. We call them out. That little prayer you see in the name of Jesus that I say everybody pray. I can just pray alone. It's not a ritual. When I say everybody pray, you are a benefactor of an anointing that should come to them. Are we together now? When we pray, sometimes I say hold hands and let's pray. That's the reason why I listen to every message. I've told you. I don't sit down and do any big manism because the things you hear me preach most times yes i prepared it and all of that but let me tell you the anointing that delivers those things are, is bigger than me i have to go back and listen by myself and receive the prophecy for myself otherwise i can be blessing others and never enter certain dimensions praise the lord please lift your hands our time is gone i want to pray for you lift your hands In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, I pray for everyone here, honestly speaking, from the depth of my heart. I pray for you from today. I release you into a strange realm of favor. A strange realm of favor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, receive it right now. Favor on everything you do. I decree and declare the kind of open doors you have never seen. I prophesy to your life right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I command, listen, mysteriously. Some you will not even be able to explain how it happened. I command the doors to open now. I command the doors to open now. I decree and declare the gift of man if men have never risen to help you i place that anointing on your life begin to enjoy the ministry of men enjoy the ministry of men i pray for you the kind of hunger god can put in a man if you have never carried it carry it now hunger is a fire carry it now in the name of jesus Carry it now in the name of Jesus. Carry it now in the name of Jesus. Hunger for spiritual things. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands. I pray for you. Whatever makes people trivialize your grace. There is a grace for honor and influence. It's not by forcing people to honor you. Shabakatos kapariatakata. In the name of Jesus, everyone genuinely connected to this grace, carry that grace for honor. Carry that grace for honor. Carry that grace for influence. Go where your age cannot take you. Go where your education cannot take you. 
go where your family background cannot take you i break every obstacle and i push you forward in the name of jesus lift your hands i pray for your finances in the name of jesus i hold this money in my hand as a point of contact i stretch it towards you in the name of jesus the son of the living god i release you into a dimension of strange wealth i release you now receive it step into it i'm not talking of business suffering wealth by the finger of god i release you into it in the name of jesus i command people you did not do anything for you didn't offer any value for them they will call you and bless you by the strange hand of god in the name of jesus christ lift your hands i pray for you many of you have never you have not seen it but i pray people will no longer just be giving you money i command that they start giving you items properties vehicles i command it believe it that something you would have saved for one year in one day i release that anointing upon you jobs you didn't apply for shakatoka skatabarata in the name of jesus the son of the living god I create space for you in the realm of the spirit. Everything you have tried and tried to do, everybody tries it. It has made you mark time for years. By prophecy, move forward now. By prophecy, move forward now. Move forward now move forward now hear me any business here that is barren of customers nobody comes you are good you, your products your services right now from tomorrow morning in a strange way i command patronage for your business if there is anyone here you are anointed by god and god has trained you but no open doors for ministration no opportunity to bless people no opportunity for your grace to be recognized i declare let that veil be open now i command men to discern your grace and to take advantage of it there is a grace in this ministry that leaves shame i pray for you anything that represents shame in your life quarter to disgrace may the god that i serve arise and bail you out in the name of jesus some of you your family members right now they are at a point of intense shame if god does not help them the embarrassment will be too much i decree and declare may the god of heaven arise and do a miracle for them in the name of jesus worship him our time is gone thank you jesus please don't mix next week i will be showing you certain things all that deep things but please all through this week as you pray i'd like you to pray with understanding lord i believe in you i believe in your servant i believe in you i receive what you have released that came through the word that is the word of triumph i receive it write down the things you want to see happen continue your praise over it you may not do it every day but where you have opportunity don't just dance anyhow write the request lord these things must happen before december and i thank you i worship you for it and you watch we are we are doing a strange just cooperate with god and watch what happens in the weeks coming our last miracle service is by the corner we are going to take it in this dimension until it gets to that time. It will be fire in this place. My goodness. My goodness. God wants you to testify. He wants you to know that he is God. Lift your hands and thank him. Father, we give you all the praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please keep standing, everybody.
you are here you are not born again you've never truly given your life to jesus please no moving around you are here you have not truly handed your life to jesus you've seen everything that god is doing you've heard it there are people here who have maybe at one point you gave your life to jesus but things started going around in your life and you're saying man of god i want to run back our time is gone please wherever you are overflow one two three wherever you are online just listen to the prayer and then connect please i want you to make your way come out quickly we have just a minute for this there has to be somebody who wants to surrender to jesus make your way to the front whether you are inside whether you are outside god bless you as you come the spirit of god is bringing someone don't stop them as they come the holy ghost is talking to you please keep standing stand up my brother so that there will be space come come quickly god bless you thank you for your bold decision don't sit back and say god understands no just one minute clear the way for them please if you're coming i want you to rush 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 because i'm going to lead them to pray now god bless you god bless you he's given you a new beginning i believe there are still people outside i believe there are still people outside don't let the devil cheat you in this culmination of this triumph that god is giving make your way to the front make your way to the front it's a bold decision but i salute that decision god bless you god bless you hallelujah those of you in front i want you to lift your right hand say this after me if you are joining them please come quickly come quickly so that you follow in the prayer say after me lord jesus say it again lord jesus you're joining them join quickly and say lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe you died and rose again just for me tonight i hand my life over to you you are my lord and savior i believe in you and i receive your life into my spirit from today i am your child the holy spirit is within me i declare that i walk in victory all the days of my life in jesus name keep your hands lifted i declare your sins forgiven i declare that the hand of god is upon you his life is upon you based on the integrity of scripture i release you to a life of unending victory i command the forces that stand between you and your destiny to give way i declare that your life becomes a testament of glory unfolding glory ever increasing glory the glory that excels in the name of jesus christ amen and amen thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for making this decision a gentleman is waving his hands behind you i'd like you to all turn please turn this way just follow the gentleman smiling at you and then um he'll communicate a few details to you praise the lord now aside from those aside from those going out now if this is your first time worshiping with us wherever you are inside outside we have just a minute for that please i'd like you to gallantly make your way to the front we want to bless you now you understand what we do when we welcome you god bless you make your way to the front dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.